All right, here's the update. I opened a can of Four loco on an empty stomach, which means this garbage drink is already at full effect. I am going to finish it as I continue the story, but right now I'm only like halfway through it. If you don't know what Four loco is, it is uh, chaos in a can. Just <laughs> absolute dog shit. That is just stuffed to the brim with sugar. But it's like $2 a can, and the can's the size of your head, so it gets the job done. Lastly, yeah, I'm probably going to pronounce words wrong. I don't really have the fucks to give to Google how to pronounce a word, so we're just going to hold tight and accept whatever new pronunciation I say. This story sucks. I don't know where that came from. I just wanted to get, get that off my chest. I've read this once before. Uh, and I deleted it because I just couldn't accept it. So we're doing it drunk, baby. I will try to read this in a serious tone. Uh, so this will still try <laughs> try to be a uh, serious narration. I do not see that lasting for too long because this story fucking sucks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. I know this story may seem unbelievable, but it's true. And trust me, I used to be a skeptic who laughed at anyone who believed in anything paranormal or religious. That was until my fateful encounter with this cursed game. This isn't a creepypasta or some fake ghost story for kids. This really happened to me. I am a huge Tomb Raider fan, much like anyone with a brain, and I had played all the games, that is except for the Legends timeline games, as I am more of a fan of the classic Tomb Raider games. I always thought that Laura Croft is the perfect woman. She is badass. She doesn't take shit from nobody. And she doesn't end up living some boring family life or being a mother like most women. She lives life on her own terms. I could never see anything scary or distruving about Tomb Raider. That was until that fateful day. As I've said, I've never played the games in the Legends timeline, but at that point, I was in some grotty town, you know the ones. It was run down, most shops were local stores or wheeled shops. <laughs> what the fuck is that sentence? I was run down, most shops were local stores or wheeled shops. Fuck you. Where there seems to be gambling dens and bookies on every street corner, what? Every street corner, that, or mobile phone shops. I walked into a antique store and there there was knights in armor and Soviet flag and other antiques. They also had old games and DVDs, but there was one that caught my attention, and it was a PC game with no cover except a printed sheet with only written on it in permanent marker, Tomb Raider PC. Of course, being a huge Tomb Raider fan, I decided to buy it. Big mistake. I brought the game to the shopkeeper, a strange old man with a scar going down his face, and I asked how much was the game. And he looked sacred, it's supposed to be scared, and said, Stranger, I will give you this one for free, with an ominous look. I didn't think anything of it, so I took the free game and gave him a tip. I did ask what happened to the cover, and he said he didn't know, it was just sold to him like that, but the kid who sold it ended up in... Hold on, wait. <laughs> There's no commas or anything, so I was gonna try and speed run that sentence, but this looks so fucking stupid. Okay, <clears throat> I did ask what happened to the cover. And he said, he didn't know. It was just sold to him like that. But the kid who sold it ended up in a insane asylum, screaming about the demonist ghost. When I got home, I was excited to finally play a game in Tomb Raider's Legends timeline. And I opened the case, but I found no official disc. Just a black DVD with written on it, Tomb Raider. I was disappointed, but I got the game for free, so I couldn't complain. I opened the disk drive of my laptop and placed a disk inside. I don't have PS4 or 5 because I only like classic games, not the newer ones. So I put the game in the disk drive and closed it. Thinking back on this, I wished I had not. The auto installer didn't start and I was forced to explore the disk files and there was one file called laracroft.x. The title screen loaded like any other Tomb Raider game with Laura Croft on the title screen, and the options of start game, extras, and options next to her, and the pleasant Tomb Raider music playing. 
but there was not Croft Manor. I pressed start game and what I saw will stick with me for the rest of my life. For a split second, the Tomb Raider theme slowed down and became demonic. <laughs> Fuck off. The picture became a close-up of Lara Croft's face. Her hair, now much longer, and she looked tired and bloated. Her eyes were also crying blood, and there was this distorted sound of a crying baby, but not just distorted, but demonic and evil. I thought it must be a glitch in the game, so I tried thinking nothing of it. <laughs> what the fuck ever? The game stared, but there was no intro cutscene or anything, no witty lines from Lara or introduction to where this was taking place, just a first level title. <sighs> I did it. All one sentence, baby. The first level was not named after a location or anything like that. It was only called Week One. Lara Croft was in a cavern with walls that looked like flesh. And as I moved her forward, there was pools of blood. At first, there was no enemies, just jumping puzzles and swimming sections where Lara Croft was swimming in blood. Then, Laura had to fight these wheeled bloody blob things, and when they died, they cover the floor with more blood. There was also a creepy background noises that sounded like the moaning and Martin Gothica for the PS1. As the level continued and... What? As the level continued and became less demented, and we were in open air fighting normal Tomb Raider enemies. Soon, we came to a clearing, and a message came saying, Week 2. Oh god, it's dog shit. Fuck me. I guess that this must be the story of Lara being trapped in some strange land, and how she survived in the weeks that she was trapped there. Anyway, this area was a misty field covered in strange alien eggs, just like the ones from Alien. So, I had to avoid them because I was worried that Laura might get face-hugged. So I walked her past the eggs and jumped past them, but there was some that required all my Tomb Raider gaming skills to get past. Soon, the path led to a cavern that was just fleshy, just like the last, and there was conveyor belts transporting more eggs that were coming out of tubes. This must be where the aliens were producing their kin, and there were more and more of them. There were also these strange alien guards with guns, but I could take them down with Laura's pistols. Then, Laura found a shotgun, and I found that the... I should probably cut that out. Oh well. Then Laura found a shotgun, and I found that the eggs could be destroyed with this weapon. We continued through the cavern, and then by the crouch. What? We continued through the cavern and then by the crouch and lifted her up and the scream faded to- What the fuck are you fucking talking about? We continued through the cavern and then by the crouch and lifted her up and the screen faded to black for around 10 seconds. Then the title card came again. Week 3. Now, Laura was in here mansion and she was in bed. I thought that this must mean that previous events were a bad dream. Then Laura crawled out of bed and she was naked. This was a dream come true for any Tomb Raider fan. <laughs> because who among us, among us potion, wouldn't have dream of seeing the gorgeous Laura Croft naked and it was a joy to see. All the details were there down <laughs> to her. Down to her pubic her and vulva and heaving <laughs> breasts. My god. <laughs> Oh, the details were there, down to her pubic her, and vulva, and heaving breasts. My, it's the fucking my god. My god. I figured that this must be the point where you guide Lara Croft around mansion. I got her to explore the vast mansion that she owns. Until we got to her swimming pool, and then it became disturbing. There was a scream... Then the swimming pool water turned blood red. The walls had become flesh-like, and top of the swimming pool was covered, but dark bright lights illuminated the pool. Then I saw that demonic tadpoles spawned by an alien-looking tendril were chasing Laura. I tried to get her to swim away, but they kept gaining on her, no matter how fast I got her to swim. They kept getting closer and closer, and I was pushing on the D-pad as hard as I could, but... It was no use. They surrounded her and engulfed her. Then I heard her scream and she woke up back in the cave. 
This was all too disturbing and creepy, but I got her to move onwards. There was more eggs blocking the way, so I got Laura to shoot them, but this time, they split into two. And shooting the ones that split into two only got them to split into four. So I had to get Laura to avoid them, and then, in some rooms, the eggs were self-replicating, so that the entire rooms were full of eggs. I had to put all my Tomb Raiding gaming skills to the test to get Laura to avoid them. I managed to find a safe path by climbing up walls and some insanely difficult jumping puzzles. Then I reached Laura to the exit, and she fell through the floor and kept falling for around a minute until she reached another cave room where the walls were covered in eggs. Then the screen went black for 15 seconds and then another message came. Week 4. The cavern continued to become more disgusting. There was no eggs going forward this time, but there were faces embodied into the walls of the cavern and gross fleshy lumps. Then there were screams that echoed all throughout the cavern and I could he and I could hear very faintly another noise, but I couldn't make out what it was. The enemies were also disturbing. What looked like floating kidneys with eyes and weird bobs of flesh could take different forms. They were not too much trouble though. The walls of cavern became even more thick and dangerous and I felt that if Laura were to touch them, she would be absorbed into them as well like the faces in the cavern's walls. By the end of the level, Laura looked slightly tired as she knew that some horror might be inflicted upon her. Then, the level ended as she went through a fleshy door. Week 5 Then Laura Croft was in more fleshy caverns, but this time the walls had large sick gashes and wounds in them. But there was no blood. In fact, there was not blood in any part of this level. But it looked like the walls should be bleeding, but they weren't. Instead of pools of blood for Laura to swim in, it were now pools of water and what looked like small pools of egg white yolk. These weren't so bad, but the way they looked was disgusting and putrid, even worse than the blood. Laura looked uncomfortable at all of this, and so did I. This was sick, and it had to be a hacked game or the work of some sadistic madman. Laura was also increasingly tired throughout this level and had to sometimes stop to rest or sleep. The game gave an energy bar for this, so it made some parts of the level even more tense because of this bar. This must be because of the horrors of the Eldritch Land are draining her of her energy. There was also a red dot appeared underneath Laura's health bar. I couldn't tell what it meant, but I was sure it wasn't good. The cavern began to have some weird leaves on the roofs of it like fleshy leaves on the fleshy cavern. The enemies here were also disturbing, such as the ones that looked like floating cow's livers, and there were also these ones that looked like spines and would try to wrap around Laura and kill her. I managed to get her through this nightmare, and then week six. If these caverns were not disgusting before, they were now. They were covered in veins this time, and there was full of these gross slimy creatures that didn't look like they resembled anything other than some weird proto-life forms from the prehistoric times. There were also messages put on the floor and rotting meat, saying, turn back, or don't go any further, or you'll be cursed just like we were. There was also that strange sound again that was still too faint to make out. This was all too disgusting and sickening, and clearly, Laura thought it so as well because she <laughs> clutched her tummy and threw up. Laura actually vomited, and this lasted for around 50 seconds. Did you fucking time it? As I led her through the level, she kept looking sick on and off again, like the whole environment of where she is, is makes her sick to the stomach. She also looked tired at some points, and moved slower, like this was all bringing her down, but then, at then, next second, she could gain a rush of energy, like she was more determined to overcome what was there. This went on for some time, and I think this level might have lasted for around 10 minutes. Then, we came to the end and Laura just sat on the floor and cried for around a whole minute. Week 7, Part 1 Laura had to move through more of these fleshy caves and there were some seriously dangerous jumps she had to make. There were also these strange flesh creatures that looked like the snarks from Half-Life but cross with a fish. They crawled and leaped at Laura to try and swarm her but... I got her to shot them away. Laura still kept throwing up now, again sometimes throwing up for entire minutes. Minutes! Meh. 
She's really disgusted with this hellish HR. Oh, fuck, is it Geiger? Geiger? I want to say it's Geiger. Or Geiger. HR Geiger Caverns. And so am I. I almost couldn't play anymore, but as a true Tomb Raider fan, I couldn't miss this opportunity to see a rare version of Tomb Raider. I've never met a Tomb Raider fan in my life. <laughs> so Laura also seemed to switch from being extremely tired to having balance of energy on a whim. Talking of energy, I also noticed... <laughs> I also noticed that Laura's breasts seemed to have gotten quite bigger and thought this must be for fan service, which is gr <laughs> which is greatly appreciated by us gamers. I know that in the Legends timeline, Laura has smaller breasts than she did in the original games, but maybe they were not meant to be like that originally. I didn't know why they would only now become larger, but this is clearly a beta for the fully released game, so it would be a bit rough. Week 7 Part 2 The jumps in this level were troublesome, and I had to use my full awareness of surroundings to get Laura across. Some of the jumps you had to look for obscure nooks and crannies for the level before making them. This was clearly for hardcore Tomb Raider fans like myself. Sometimes, Laura would throw up and need to sleep in room where a jump is to be made, which is helpful because I could look around the surroundings while she's being sick. Laura would also sometimes become dizzy, like when she made a jump, and even when she's running around. Then she would stop and look dazed. I've never seen Laura like this. These aliens must be really messing with her mind and making her feel dread and despair. It was really hard to go on with this game and seeing such sufferings happen to Laura. The end of the level happened as Laura see a giant floating prawn like alien and she screams and vomits and then I see that blood is coming from her eyes. <laughs> oh god, we gayed, baby. This level had very few enemies, but... It have music, horrible off-tune music, and what sounds like that creepy Lavender Town-themed Pokemon Red and Blue. Jesus Christ. There was also that strange sound that could be heard early, which I realized was a heartbeat. The music got louder and louder, was becoming ear-piercing. I tried turning the volume down, but nothing happened. And Laura was also finding this torturing at first. She looked irritable, but then she started yelling and shouting. Finally, she was laughing, madly, and laugh got louder and louder until they were deafening with them music, and it kept going until the screen went to black for about 15 seconds. Then the screen cut to a close-up image of Laura's face, crying blood, and the level ended. Week 9. There's a change of scenery. We are now in a forest of thick trees and swamps. At this point, it seems that Laura must hunt food to survive, which... Must have meant there were survival mechanics meant to be added to the Tomb Raider Legend games. What Laura needed to hunt was conveyed with objectives. And these were some of the strangest creatures ever. These were things such as deer stomach with honey and chilies and sands. Undertale. Then when I got her to hunt them, Laura Croft would wolf them down like some wild fiend. And I would see the most disturbing, demented face on her face like she was some rabid beast rowing on flesh, and this entire thing made my blood coil. I thought that this might cure her sickness, and did seem to, but as we came to a disgusting alien tree, which seemed to have veins instead of stems and bones, oh, and bones instead of roots, and instead of seeds, embryos, fetuses, or even babies, they were hanging from the tree like seeds, and you could see and hear the hearts beating. At this sight, Laura clutched her belly and groaned. I was hoping that she would not throw up, and I was even giving her encouragement, saying, Come on, Laura, you can pull through, and you're stronger than this. But it was not use. Laura turned to the screen as she, <laughs> as she was looking right at me and said, I'm sorry. Thus she threw up for a full three minutes. After that... I had her move onwards, hoping I would be ready for whatever horror would come next, but noting would prepare me for what would come next in the swamp part of the level. There was bones forming through the ground around the swamp pits, and the swamps themselves seemed to be cross-sections 
of stomachs, and sometimes a wild rabbit or a deer would fool into them and become digested before our very eyes. Laura again, seeing this look, very dizzy and then sick. Once again, she threw up. At last, I got her to the end of the level, and then week 10. Laura Croft's breasts definitely looked bigger now, and not only that, her nipples seemed to be erect, as you could see them through her shirt. I was glad that the devs included this fan service. It made the disturbing and disgusting parts more easy to get through knowing that we might get <laughs> that we <laughs> that we might get see more of Laura <laughs> I was glad that the devs included this fan service. It made the disturbing and disgusting parts more easy to get through knowing that we might get see more of <laughs> of Laura's ripe bosoms. Laura was also wearing different clothing, like it seemed that her tank top was different slightly. In this level, there was more trees with babies growing on them and stomach swamps, but on top of that, there were also bushes, and but instead of leaves, they had lungs that were constantly taking in the air of the swamp and pumping it out as poisonous gases. These were a pain to avoid, but I kept Laura on her mission. The level ended with Laura going walking over a log over a ravine of blood, which had giant lungs, hearts, and stomachs on the walls of the cliff. If Discord keeps going off, I swear to fucking god, go away. Get. Go away. Where was I? Oh yeah, week 11, baby. Good fucking god, tastes like shit. So now it had been 11 weeks. Since Laura Croft had gone into this hellish realm, and I was wondering how long it would be till she saw civilization again, or how long until she could just relax in her manor house, because the place she is in now is horrifying. We reached the end of a ravine crossing, but it was still more forest than swamps, but they were even more disturbing. The here trees not only had babies growing from them, but they had faces on them, evil demented faces. Laura seemed to be feeling more uncomfortable, and sometimes she would put her hand on her pelvis like pain or aches are coming from there. There was now what looked like veins on the ground, which you could see blood running through them, like this that this land is <laughs> one. There was now what looked like veins on the ground, which you could see blood running through them, like this that this land is one big eldritch organism. The stomach swamps were here as well, but... Some had arms coming out of them that tried to grab Laura and pull her in, and there were these floating alien creatures that would come down from some trees, which they seemed to be connected to by some kind of life support system. Laura was, again, sick at the very sight of this unholy madness, and she threw up several times. I got here a void and shoot her away out of this level, and then... Week 12, Part 1 at this stage of the level, things were much the same, but even more disturbing and difficult. Are you guys disturbed yet? He says it's more disturbing than before. I think he said, oh fuck, he said things are even more disturbing than they've ever been disturbing before. Fuck, man. As I moved Laura through this level, avoiding the horrors of the forest and the swamp there, there was this creepy heartbeat sound that started quiet, but just got louder and louder. Also, that distorted lavender theme started again, and was again annoying Lara Croft, but I got her to avoid the horrors while not letting me get distracted by the evil music. Then, at around the halfway point, Laura needed to lie down and rest again, before her sanity meter was drained by all this Lovecraftian horror. And while she was lying down, a robotic tentacle came from one of the trees and scanned Laura's belly. I tried to move her, she wouldn't move and I pressed all buttons on the keyboard, but noting happened. This must be a cutscene, and then realized that, perhaps, if Laura moves, whatever is controlling that device will find her and do unspeakable things. So, it was a good thing that I didn't get her to move, and after what I would see next, I was so glad that I didn't get her to move. As the device scanned, a picture appeared on the screen of a horrifying creature. It had black eyes and small arms, as well a face that looked almost like a skull. Its head was also transparent, so you could see its evil brain fuck off. 
and know the insane genius that either rules this place or is putting Laura through this nightmare. Week 2, part 2. It's supposed to be week 12. Week 12, part 2. Then when we reached the near the end of the level, there was a hideous sight of a huge monstrous tree that was draining blood from the earth. And from its branches were hideous babies with fangs. And in the center of the tree was the most horrifying face that seemed to be constantly screaming in rage and terror. When Laura Croft saw this, she clutched her belly and was almost sick, but she wasn't. She had got used to these sights and managed to stop herself throwing <laughs> and managed to stop herself throw vomiting everywhere. And she looked very pleased with herself for resisting this urge. So she was ready to take on this boss and its health bar appeared with a horrifying name. What the fuck is that? Loth, Loth Hitler? I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. Lothitla. Lothitla. Who cares? The boss kept lunching at her and trying to grab here and also shoot corrosive gases at her. The babies would also be launched by... And would try to gang... <laughs> the babies would also be launched and would try to gang up and consume her. To make things worse, there were stomach swamps all around the tree, so... You had to not only fight it and avoid the attack posed by the tree and the babies, but also avoid the swamps as well. On the second stage of the boss fight, these had arms coming from them as well. I managed to take it down with my pro Tomb Raider skill, but it was one tough battle. Lothitla died and emitted a blood-curdling, horrifying, nasty scream that even made the screen go static for a bit. I thought at this point that Laura's troubles were over now. But boy, was I wrong. Then a message came up saying stage on completed prepare for stage two. Fucking what? Then a message came up saying stage on completed prepare for stage two. It's supposed to say stage one. Why did you write out one incorrectly and then just put the number two? Bro, fuck you. Feeling energized and proud having completed the stage, I went to bed. Though I heard the most terrifying dream, or should I say... <laughs> <laughs> Though I had the most terrifying dream, or should I say, nightmare, I was on my computer with classic Laura Croft wallpaper that I have on the computer and my <laughs> and my many Laura Croft figures. I was suffering online, <laughs> and then the Laura Croft wallpaper said to me in sad voice, "How could you put me through this?" Then her, as well as all the Laura Croft figures, <laughs> fuck, started crying blood. Then that baby crying started, that demonic baby crying. It was at that point that I screamed and everything was back to normal. <laughs> I decided to go back to my room because it was very late. But Then when I came to my room, I heard vomiting and saw Laura Croft being sick in my bedroom sink. She looked pale and dead, like her hair had grown much longer and her eyes were black. I have to fucking pee. I don't want to break the seal. Then she ran at me and screamed the most horrifying scream. It was at that point I woke up. It was at that point I woke up her scream still echoing in my ears. I decided I needed to know more about this game and what happens next. I booted the game. And it went straight to my latest save. And then. Then. <laughs> I booted the game and it went straight to my latest save. And then. Then. <laughs> week 13. Ugh. Laura had now arrived at a big mansion, and it was not her mansion, but a dark, evil mansion. At first, things seemed not too bad, but I knew they would get worse, as we had not even got inside yet. Laura move... What? Laura move Kawashilu through the, <laughs> through the building. Laura move Kawashilu through the building. There was something that seemed a bit off-model with Laura. I just noticed that, like, her abdomen had become slightly more prominent. Not much, but it looked it looked it. It looked it looked but it looked more rounded. Fuck. This is barley noticeable though, and I thought I might have been imagining things. Laura occasionally put her hand on her pelvis as if she was a bit uncomfortable. And or is having some sharp pain in her pelvis. Sometimes she would suddenly hold her hip and look like she had a sharp pain as if something had just stung her there. 
There was plus side though. Laura was no longer tired in this level and no longer needed to sleep suddenly. <laughs> she also wasn't being sick anymore, so perhaps Lothitla was causing her sickness and tiredness. So, perhaps. Now she has defeated that curse or she has become immune to such evil influences. Though, there was something I noticed. And though Laura seemed a bit less steady-footed like she and some jumps seemed harder to make. This mansion grounds had big gardens and a large pits to jump over, but as Laura was now a little bit less steady, this was tougher and there was a chance. What? But as Laura was now a little bit less steady, this was tougher and there was a chance. This seemed to be the next level of Tomb Raider challenge. Fucking shut the fuck up out there. Fucking dickhead in his truck. Small ass dick. Uh, this seemed to be the next level of Tomb Raider Challenge, and I demanded a bit of a. This seemed to be the next level of Tomb Raider Challenge, and I managed to pull Laura through because I'm a pro. Also, in this garden, where we're. What? Where a weird statue that seemed to have muscular bodies but small doll like heads. There were also these brains on pedestals that hurt. <laughs> Why do they pause it like that? That hurt. There were also these brains on pedestals that hurt Laura whenever she came near them. So, the best course of action was to take them out from afar. Though, apart from difficult jumps and the brains, this level was really peaceful, and I almost thought the game was going to start taking it easy on me. More like luring me into a false sense of security, we reached the mansion door, and Laura entered, and then... Week 14, part 1. I gotta fucking pee. I forgot where I am, so I'm just <laughs> I'm just gonna say uh, week 14, part one. Laura seemed to be at ease. What? Laura seemed to be at ease, much like in that last level, although she still seemed to have the occasional pain her up. All right, this is gonna get more difficult. <laughs> although she still seemed to have the occasional pain in her pelvis or hips, that would cause her to stop while moving for a few seconds. Though, she really seemed to have taken a liking to this mansion, and I could see why. Because it's beautiful. Stunning statues, wonderful bedrooms, luscious dining room, and a great swimming pool. Also, a training area where Laura Croft would train her jumping, which I could still... Wow, this really is going to become much more difficult. This is my fault now. Also, a training area where Laura Croft could train her jumping, which I could see... She... Which I could... S which I could she see needed. Fuck me, that's difficult. Which I could she see needed. I know it's supposed to be see she needed. Which I could she see needed because she felt a little more off balance. I got her to jump, crawl, and climb around this course. There was something I noticed during this. And this goes back to the off model point I mentioned before. And that is, that is when the camera zooms in on Laura at some points. I could swear that Laura's waistline seemed to be thicker than usual. I figured that if my theory was correct, and that this was the beta version of this game, or hack based on a, or a hack based on a beta version, that they might have been playing around with different models for Laura, and this might have been an earlier version of her model. Not only was this mansion great, but also seemed that Laura Croft had been expected, as there not only seemed to be an obstacle course, like Laura likes, but when she finished, but when she had finished the course, I moved her to the dining room, and there was meal prepared for her. The meal <laughs> consisted of some of Laura's favorite foods, so it must have been for her. How the fuck do you know her favorite foods, my guy? After she tucked in and at a good meal, she went to one of rooms and <laughs> went to bed. Part two. However, a cutscene showed that Laura didn't seem to sleep easy in the bed. She kept snoring, moving her legs around, and sometimes clutching her chest, as if her heart was burning. It seemed that she was having nightmares or was aware of the horrors that looked around the corner. It was at point that the mansion became uncanny. A loud scream awoke Laura, but she didn't seem to mind, as she wasn't sleeping well anyway. She got up and changed into her gear. 
And then I moved her out of her room, and, and in corridor outside, there was now these bladder-like sacks that had formed in the walls around the pipes, and they sprayed what looked like urine at Laura Croft to do damage. Then the more I moved Laura, the more unnerving this mansion was becoming, because there seemed to be nerves running through the walls, and I could only think of the brains before on the stalls in the garden. There were each room now I seemed to have these... Strange fleshy gray colored saucer shaped discs on the ceilings of some of the rooms, though were connected to the nerves in the walls. These fleshy discs would cause damage to Laura and were hard to hit. The dining room had a huge one in the middle of the table now, and the room Laura had been sleeping in had one just above her bed. The mansion seemed wonderful at first, but it contained all of these horrors hidden away. I realized the exit out of this level was in the swimming pool and moved Laura to there and swam her to the exit at the bottom of the pool. Week 15, Part 1 Laura really benefited from that swim in the pure water of the swimming pool in the last level as her skin looked amazing and pure and so much so that it glowed. <laughs> Shit. I thought I had it. Laura really benefited from that swim in the pure water of the swimming pool in the last level as her skin looked amazing and pure so much so that it seemed to glow. Her hair was also more luscious, long, and thick. The swimming pool must have have washed some impurities off of her and rejuvenated her body. The graphics of her skin and body now seem to be far above what the PS2 and early 2000s were capable of. And I have never seen Laura look so pure. <laughs> there were also details that I never noticed on Laura Croft that seemed to be there much more visible, like freckles and a few moles that seemed to be much dark of visible now. This was a very nice detail that allowed me to see some of Laura Croft's... I just said that by myself, I didn't mean to say that. This was a very nice detail that allowed me to see some of Laura's more distinctive features, and as a huge Tomb Raider fan, this was a godsend. I now knew facts about Laura's body that most other fans didn't, and I felt so there was one complaint, though, that this improvement did seem to cause a slight visual glitch in Laura's midsection, as there was a faint, dark vertical line going down the middle of her belly. This must have been some modeling glitch that these advanced models of Laura caused, and as this is a beta, I would have to deal with it. I have never fucking heard a story stretch out a pregnancy arc this fucking long before. Where was I? Uh, this is a beta, I would have to deal with it. Week 15, part two. This level was started in a ballroom of the mansion. I'm gonna take a swig. Fuck. And there was a grand piano playing music by itself. There was also the sound of that heartbeat in the background again. And whenever there was any noises close to Laura, the heartbeats would increase in pace. When I moved Laura through this ballroom and saw that the piano's music were being amplified by ears in the walls, these ears also seemed to do damage to Laura when she moved close. It was a good job that heartbeat sounds were there because they seemed to warn when something was going to damage Laura. As I moved Laura out of this room, there was now a corridor that left to more bedrooms, which seemed to have those fleshy discs on the ceilings again, but they were much bigger this time. These were I had to get Laura to take one out so she could get a key that was located in a bathroom of one of the bedrooms. There were new monsters, which were these Long spines that came out of the walls and tried to impale Laura. They were tough, but I managed to get Laura out of the way in time. The last part of the level was a game room with stag heads and mounted on the walls and a snooker table. Then, Laura exited to a dressing room. Week 16, Part 1. Wait, what? Laura was now in a big dressing room? How long was she in the fucking dressing room? She was in a big dressing room with many different outfits and mirrors. At this point, I saw that Laura's waist was not just thicker, it had a small bump that was poking out of the bottom of her tank top. It was like her usual clothing couldn't cover her full belly, so there was a tiny gap where it poked out. It almost looked like she was pregnant, but she couldn't be. There is no way that Laura Croft could be pregnant, and if she, even if she is, I'm sure they wouldn't keep it. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> if there was, there's no way that Laura Croft could be pregnant, and even if she is, I'm sure that she wouldn't keep it. 
But that bump looked very suspicious, like you would see on a woman who's just starting the show. But it because it was only a slight bump that I just thought this was a glitch and because this was probably based on a beta, they didn't get her motto exactly right sometimes. Though in this dressing room, Laura changed out of her usual- What do you mean they didn't get her motto exactly right? It's the same fucking model. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Though in this dressing room, <laughs> Laura changed out of her usual gear and put on some different clothes. She was now wearing what looked like jogging pants. And while she's wearing her usual tank top, she did- Oh, she does seem to have a layer of cloth covering the gap that seemed to be forming between the tank top and her trousers. The rest of her clothes she put in her inventory along with many other clothes from the dressing room she seemed to think might come in handy. It's great that these video game characters seem to have unlimited storage space. <laughs> the heartbeat <laughs> continued through the level and now seemed to be a permanent feature of the game now. Week 16, Part 2. I moved Laura out of the dressing room. How long was she in the dressing room? Fuck me, dude. And into attic, there was... There was a... a fuck. <laughs> and... And into an attic, there was a those lungs trees again coming out of the floor and pumping poisonous gases whenever Laura tried to come near them and there was a new monster. I swear to God, this story is like if Four Loco was written as a fucking Laura Croft creepypasta. This shit is unhinged. These were a disturbing being that looked like a cross between a hyena and a man, but with no fur or distinguishable with distinguishable figures. Oh, Jesus, that was me. Distinguishable features. <laughs> Their skin also looked thin and translucent, and when they saw Laura, how did you, th why did you think it was a hyena if it didn't have any fur? Or no distinguishable features. It looked like two very specific things that I couldn't tell were anything at all. Okay. I kind of want to play Skyrim. I think I might play Skyrim. No, not yet. No, I'll, I'll play Skyrim later. Uh, their skin also looked thin and translucent, and when they saw Laura, they would make the most monstrous scream and charge at her. I got her to gun them down, and Laura found a new weapon, which is the grenade launcher. About time, I thought. The attic then led to artificial canal. <laughs> canal? You fucking idiot. Like you would get in a long flube. <laughs> Like you would get in a long flume. And boat. Laura boarded the boat and it took her along an... What? And it took her along an aqueduct that went over a hellish landscape of bloody rivers and ground which eyes and mouths in it. Then into a large building and down a waterfall. This then led what was either a large swimming pool area or an ancient Roman bath. <laughs> that... The Jesus Christ, there were statues alongside the the, the water in Greco-Roman style and a pillar on each of the walls. Week 17, part one. So this level started in the aforementioned bathhouse with the many statues. This was an easy level with no monsters and overall very relaxed, but I knew better this was just lure me into a false sense of security like I feel like I'm having a fucking stroke. But I knew better this was just lure me into a false sense of security like in the last stage. I moved Laura along the pool and surveyed the area. There was ground stairs <laughs> that led to a balcony above the pool. And I moved Laura up the stairs and it went to quite a height but I was sure Laura could manage it except when she got to the top she seemed practically almost breathless. I guided Laura along the balcony and there was a portion outside of the room with bright light shining on it from the sky and switch on the other side. There were some patches of shade where the light was touching the balcony. I moved Laura towards the switch and then I <laughs> found the light from the sun and started causing her damage and actually burning her skin. So I had to get Laura out of there fast. This, <laughs> fuck, this must be evil light, I thought. <laughs> This, this must be evil light, I thought. And so I... <laughs> this must be evil light, I thought. And so I moved Laura along the shady parts and made it to the switch. <sighs> a cutscene showed that a door opened in the pool and I guided Laura back there. 
and when Laura reached the bottom of the stairs, she sounded a bit out of breath again. Yeah, me too, bro, I feel that. Week 17, part two. Then I plunged Laura into the pool and swam across the length of pool and dived her down to the bottom where the door was and she moved through it. The doorway ended on a underwater tunnel, which opened out into an which opened out onto an indoor garden with many fruit trees. Is it weird that I immediately thought of Sonic Adventure 2? That is probably weird. I just thought of fruit trees and I have to grab the tree and you have to shake it until a fruit comes off and then you have to go feed it to a chow. Some people say it's chow. I believe them. I'm going to keep calling them chow. I called them chow when I was like 10. They're still a chow to me. Little cutie little babies. Um, <laughs> I forgot where I was. Laura ate some of the fruit which restored health lost in that evil light part. In this level, that heartbeat sound also seemed to be louder and more consistent. The trees here were good, but there were some of the bad ones, like the evil lung trees. They were pumping up poisoned gas on some parts of the garden, but these seemed worse as they had mouths in the trunks that opened and swallowed insects or sighed before admitting toxic fumes. There was now two of these trees that I had to navigate Laura past, and as I did, I noticed at this stage that Laura had small brown patches on her face. Whoops, I didn't mean to crack my knuckle. And I though this is either a glitch or she is slowly being poisoned from trees. So I made her run fast to the exit. She got out just in time, and then week 18. Laura entered this new area, which was seemed to be a training room or ancient gym. As I moved her forward to explore, she suddenly stopped and put her hand on her abdomen with a confused look on her face. I had noticed that her abdomen was getting larger, and the gap at the bottom of her tank top was widening. As she was holding her belly, there was a sound that sounded like fluttering. Then, I saw what it was there. It was a demonic look moth flying towards her with skull symbols on its wings. I got her to shoot it down and continue on. <laughs> the gym employed more ways to test my Tomb Raider skills, as there were more switches that I needed to press and items to pick up that were way above the gym but could be reached by climbing ladders and jumping between ladders and platforms. Laura seemed out of breath every now and then, but sometimes she also looked like she was getting a bit too hot or is suddenly burning up. She took that extra layer of cloth that is beneath her tank top and threw it away, which revealed more of that bump which i was sure is a glitch the developers probably put that cloth strap as a way to hide the model issue and totally later had laura throw it away as a way to explain <laughs> why it's not there in other levels god damn week 18 part 2 we then approached the switches but they were guarded by two of those lung trees and they were more developed than previous ones as you could see bronchi 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 on them and this meant i had to get laura to charge it to the switch and push it the switch then opened two doors one to the next area and another on same level that laura is in the switch opened to another pool area that led down to the ground floor but you had to swim it the jump what the jump puzzles and climbing to reach this higher level would be impossible to do in reverse so the only way to get back down is to dive Laura had to swim a very long way to reach the bottom, and her oxygen bar getting very low before she surfaced. <sighs> so when she did reach dry land, she had to catch her breath, which took 30 seconds. And during this some time, what? And during this, and during this, some small gobbling looking creatures emerged. <clears throat> they looked very disturbing, like small skinless monkeys, but with goblin ears and hideous pink skin. They giggled horridly and ran, and they proceeded to proke Laura's belly as she was recovering. This took health off, and I got Laura to shoot them off. Laura killed them and took health packs off their body. Then, as I moved Laura forward, she stopped to scratch her tummy like it was really starting to itch. She did this now ag she what? She did this now again and once she scratched so hard that she drew blood. Moving through the doors, reach the next level. <laughs> Week 19, part 1. At first, I could not make out the next era as it was blurred, but then Laura rubbed her eyes, and it was normal again. This was a nice touch, I thought. 
We were now in a kitchen area, and there are food roasting on fires and bowls of fruit. Then more of those insects attacked. There was these moths again, with their loud fluttering, and now giant flies like those associated with Beelzebub. I got Laura to shoot them up, but she took damage. At this time, to her second health bar, and I noticed this made Laura look worried. I still didn't know why Laura had a second health bar, or why she needed it. Laura also fought some deer creatures, and she was able to cook some meat off of one of those that she killed, which she again wolfed down with great eagerness. Then, I moved Laura further on and reached a room, which was fleshy, and had some nerves in the wall. This room contracted and jerked about a bit in rapid succession that made sounds similar to a hiccup. This really grossed me out and made me feel sick, but Laura was strong. She didn't feel or look sick at all. All this horror must have toughed her up compared to when she was often being sick in the early levels. The room after that was even more disturbing, as it was a room with frozen liquid. But it wasn't water. It was frozen blood. Very realistic and detailed frozen blood. That was so hyper-realistic. God damn it. I'm impressed that it took them this long to use hyper-realistic. That you might have thought it came from a documentary. I had to move Laura across this frozen pool of madness, and this caused Laura to grab her tummy now and again, but she wasn't sick. Oh, this is the end of part one. Week 19, part two. I mean, okay, I, I split it into three parts. Oh my god, part one's an hour long? Oh my god! We reached the end and came to the next room. It was darkness when suddenly a loud ear-piercing roar was hurt, and a nightmare face appeared in front of Laura. I jumped, and so did Laura. This actually made her jump as well, but it seemed to more like she jumped because something had just jumped inside of her in response to the noise. I thought this must be a glitch to them not getting the animation right yet. The creature in front of Laura was a fishman thing with webbed toes and feet, with a face full of hideous teeth and a long tongue. As the creature roared, the webbing on its hands and feet dissipated, giving the creature fully formed human-looking hands and feet that left fingerprints on the walls. This was clearly a mini-boss, and I thought it off as it was trying to grab and eat Laura. Though this was an easy fight, despite his bravo, it was no match for Laura Croft. The next room was flooded with blood that came up to Laura's next, and she had to wade through this deep blood. This was until she came across a strange bike and was able to ride it through the blood to the end, where she pulled herself down with her arms and swam out through a small gap. There was a part now where Laura had to move some weight through another flooded room to move a path and the weights were human skulls. Then, a message in very realistic blood came up saying, Do you remember your mother? And it showed the plane crash where Laura's mom died. And after that, Laura was crying, crying tears of blood. Whoa, whoa. Like I said, that was part one. There is two more parts. Part one was an hour long. I mean, of course, I'm going to edit it down, so it might not be an hour. But either way, fuck. Oh, God, I need to drink more. <laughs> Ugh, this shit sucks so bad. Next level, week part 21. <laughs> Jesus Christ, week 20 part one, what the fuck? I'm laughing and I actually can't remember if I said it right or not. Oh well, this level started in a locker room and Laura changed her outfit to swimwear and this really made the scale of the modder and this really made the scale of the model error more apparent. This was more than a slight bump in the model. It was a bulge, a bulge. It was a bulge that seemed to almost reach the bottom of her breasts. It didn't seem to reach her waist entirely, but that might start intruding on that territory soon. I still thought this might be- <laughs> fuck. I still thought this must be a glitch and an error with the model, but in her tank to it could be seen as well. And before she changed at the start of the level, it seemed to have not only been covering less of it, but also being stretched as well. But. I didn't want to think that Laura Croft could be pregnant. That would just be wrong. That 
couldn't be the cause. Right? <laughs> so loud. Right? So I moved Laura to the end point of this room and she suddenly grasped herself like someone had just walked over her grave or hit her from the inside. I thought this must be the more evil horrors affecting her mind and got her to move on. To get out of the next room, Laura had to lay on this conveyor belt, which brought her to the next area. We then reached a new bathhouse section, though this looked more like a swimming pool. And before Laura could get up, that robotic tentacle from level 12 came out of the one walls and scanned Laura's belly again. And this time, another horrifying image appeared. This was of a skeletal creature in a darkened area. It had a visible spine and skull. You could also see its heart beating beneath its skin and see some bony legs. The creature had blood around its lips and bits of flesh, and also a cable that connected to something that was attached to it. It looked like a gruesome proto-life form, and the worst thing is, it was looking straight at me. Week 20 Part 2 Before Laura entered the pool, she shre- She fucking stretched herself against the wall of the pool, bending one of her legs slightly while- whilst straightening the other one. She did this for five seconds before doing this the other way around. Then she went in the pool and swam. I, I don't know why I said it like that. I don't know why I do anything ever. I had to keep her swimming, which seemed to go on for a good while. And after swimming this long pool for five minutes, she reached the other end. As she swam, the pool slowly turned from water to blood. And there was blood. And there was bodies floating in the blood and music that sounded like that creepy theme from Mansion of Madness from Time Splitters, but played in reverse. Then, as Laura came out of the pool, she stood still for five seconds before I'd get her in a move. I noticed that the way she was standing seemed awkward. I couldn't put my finger on it, but the way she was standing just seemed off and very awkward. I moved her on anyways. So we were now in ground looking, grand looking doorway that led to a corridor, a very long corridor, that I moved Laura down. Every so often this corridor had little alcoves with seats in them. As she moved down the for, uh, as she moved down the corridor became scary and faces appeared on the walls. Blood also started running down the walls and faces were laughing. As Laura walked further, she started becoming dizzy and had sit down now and again in one of the alcoves, but not for too long because demon faces like gargoyles started to appear on and behind the bench whenever she sat for too long. <laughs> Laura was brave when faced with these demon horrors, though, and still sat with good posture and rose calmly as to not show fear. As I moved around further to get out of this horror corridor, she also kept putting her hand on her lower back like she was have some pain there. As reached the end of the level, there was a big door, and she entered it. Then, week 21. We were not in an Egyptian tomb. What? <laughs> we were not in an Egyptian tomb. And Laura Croft was back in her normal clothes in this stage, but they were looking really stretched. Like we're th like, <laughs> oh my God, like they were straining against her belly that they barely covered. What more, as I moved her along the tomb, I kept thinking I was hearing what sounded like seam splitting, but that wouldn't make sense. This game must be making me paranoid. There was nothing that interesting this level and nothing of note, but there was just long stretch of hallways. Week 22, part one. I'm gonna just fucking, I don't wanna down this already, but this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> Ugh. Oh God, it gets worse. The hallway had led to a bridge over bowling lava, or was it blood? On the bridge sat a sphinx glaring at Laura and me. It doesn't even say at Laura and me, it just says glaring and Laura and me. In the pool, there were thousands of people who the Sphinx had thrown into the pit to die slowly, and they were screaming in agonizing pain. The Sphinx gave Laura a riddle, and this was the riddle. Here we fucking go. A wealthy family lived in a big circular house. They had a maid, a butler, and a gardener. The parents were going to a party. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way this is going to be the clown creepypasta. 
So they tucked the younger kids into bed and kissed them goodnight and said goodbye, and kissed the older kids goodnight. When the parents came home, all the kids were gone. They had been kidnapped. The authorities asked the butler, maid, and gardener what they were doing at the time of the kidnapping. The butler says he was organizing the library. The maid says she was dusting the corners, and the gardener says he was watering the plants. Who's lying and actually kidnapped the kids? Okay, I thought this was going to be like the, can I put a blanket over this, the, the, the clown statue? And the parents are like, Woo, get out of the house. We don't have a clown statue. Woo. To my horror, Laura had forgotten what they were talking about after, after the Sphinx had finished. <laughs> How could Laura the Great Laura Croft forget that? What is happening to her? Is this horrifying places sapping her strength? So the, <laughs> so the Sphinx asked again. Clearly, the only fail condition was getting the answer wrong. This time, Laura remembered what they were talking about, but not remember the majority of the riddle. So <laughs> the Sphinx had to... Oh my god. Had to repeat it again. And Lord got the gist of it, but still not entirely. So the Sphinx yet again repeated the riddle, and this time <laughs> Laura wrote it down. <laughs> and then she were and then she went over it trying to strain her mind to think of answer, though it was clear she was having a hard time concentrating. But she came out with the right answer. The maids, as she was dusting the corners. But if the family lives in a circular house, so there are no corners. Week 22, Part 2. The Sphinx was shocked. How could you beat me and solve the riddle in your condition? Your pregnancy brain should have made that impossible. Then the Sphinx jumped into the lava. What the fuck? And there was the most horrifying scream as... Larva engulfed the creature, burning every aspect of her slowly. <laughs> Jesus Christ, pregnancy brain? What did it mean by that? Could it mean that I fear was right? And that Laura is, in fact, pregnant in this game? But that couldn't be. Maybe the Sphinx was just taunting Laura for the madness that was caused by these curse realms. That had to be it, right? Then, next part of the tombs was a giant wall of fat advancing on Laura, and the only way, and the only was to run before it consumed Laura. The Laura, Laura had, <laughs> fuck, Laura ran to the bridge and then I got her to jump off just time, and grappling hook to the ceiling and then destroy the bridge plunging this wall of fat into the lava below. Laura came out on the other side and then went further. <laughs> what came next chilled my bones. Laura was now inside a hallway of pure blood, and it was the most, wait for it, hyper-realistic blood imaginable. I am mean, you could actually see the red and white blood sloughs floating by Laura as if she was in a giant blood vein of a giant person. Then the white blood cells advanced on Laura to try and kill her, and I had to get her the hell out of there. I got her to swim as hard as I could until she reached a giant liver, a giant liver, which she entered and was ejected into another room. Week 22, Part 3. There Laura landed and righted herself, taking longer than usual, and I could not help but notice how her usual clothes were straining against her enlarged form. This really was looking more than like just a glitch or her being of model, but an actual part of the game. There was nothing of note in this room, and I moved Laura was now in a giant stomach, and I had to move her out of there before the stomach acid started acting on her. I got her to base just in time, and she injected on a large room. I moved her around that room, which, and as I did, there was this terrible tearing sound, and Laura Croft looked at her tank top to see that. Oh, the tearing sound was her? There was now a large tear in it, and she said, oh, it broke. Then I saw something strange, and it was an outfit store. I took Laura over to the store, and I got her to shop for gear there, but all the outfits were available for 
maternity outfits for Laura, the usual outfits were grayed out. I purchased one of these outs for her, the one closest to her classic gear and fit. Then, <laughs> I had to admit the horrible truth, and that is that this Laura is indeed pregnant and is now about five and a half months fucking pregnant. Week 23, part one. I still couldn't believe it. Who would do this to Laura Croft? She is meant to be exploring ancient ruins and killing bad guys, not birthing babies. Laura Croft isn't like other women. She's not meant for the boring housewife life, Jesus. Or to be someone's mom. Laura Croft is also meant to be slim and fit with athletic abilities to take on anything not being swollen and pregnant. Yet this hack did this to Laura. How could they do this to her? I thought about seeing if this merchant in this ancient tomb would offer Laura an abortion. Jesus, fuck. But this wasn't available. Laura would just have to suffer through this pregnancy. I got Laura maternity versions of her usual costumes that would be useful for her in various stages to come of both her pregnancy and different worlds. When I walked Laura out of the store, she came to Big Room and started crying. Tears of blood. She cried for a full five minutes. It was so obvious that Laura did really not want to be pregnant either and hated it just as much as I hated her being pregnant. She cried until Haythor appeared to Laura in sprit form. Haythor reassured La Laura <laughs> that she would get through and comforted her. Holy fuck, I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> Haythor reassured Laura that she would get through and comforted her. I was thinking that at least a goddess is on Laura's side. Laura moved into the next area, which had several anvils and hammers crashing onto these anvils, but below them were stirrups that absorbed to blows. Laura had to take one of these stirrups and put it on the door and the other. Yet, as she was near these things, the sound vibrations caused her to clutch her belly. I figured that this was because the sound emitted caused a baby within her to move. Luckily, it did seem that Laura was pretty... <laughs> energized in this level so I was able to get her to move the stirrup just in time and it went to the door opening the next room. Week 23 part 2. In here, Laura had to walk through a dark room and there was pits surrounding her with either lava or jagged spikes made of diamond. Laura had no light that would work in this room. Was the thing that made it- what the fuck? Laura had no light that would work in this room was the thing that made it even worse. Luckily, Haythor was there to guide Laura down the right path to go on and make sure that she doesn't fall off, which Laura seemed to almost do at some points, as she seemed to have gotten much clumsier. When we reached the end, Laura kept shaking her hands as if she had gotten intense pins and needles in them. Then, oh, Beast came to attack her, but Laura could not grip her guns right and once again, Haythor came to help her. She firmed Laura's grip, and once the beast was dead, Laura uh, was dead, taught Laura some wrist stretching. <laughs> a goddess came to help Laura shoot a gun and then give her fucking wrist stretching exercises to relieve this feeling. Then we reached a big room with a giant brain in the middle of it, but it was a brain with no eyes. No, no brains have eyes and thus had to rely on hearing and sound to detect movement. So does that mean it had ears? If it, if it has no eyes, but it could detect sound, does that mean it has ear? Whatever. Thus, I had to stealth Laura to enter the room without her being detected, and this was hard. As Laura was becoming harder to control, the more her center of gravity shifted. It also seemed to be times when Laura would stop it because the baby was kicking within her. I managed to get her to the end of the room without too much problems, though. Week 23, part 3. The next area looked easy at first, but it was not so. I gotta take a piss. The next area looked easy at first, but it was not so. There was a long hallway with a long rug from end to end, though there were slight gaps every now and then in the run, various items littering in the floor. 
and also vases and such on pedestals. I walked Laura along this hall thinking this would be the cakewalk, but I was wrong. This hall really brought it home to me how hard Laura was becoming to control. It's like the controls were getting increasingly slippery. When I was moving Laura down this hall, it was hard to even get her to move in a straight line and she kept drifting from side to side. When we got to a gap in the rug, things got worse. Laura actually tripped and fell over. She only just saved herself by grabbing a wall or holding out her hand, and then she had to pull herself up. Laura was also knocking things over like the vases as she was stretching out further than she's used to. The small objects on the ground also kept tripping her, or almost tripping her. This baby is really causing havoc to her body. This was Laura Croft, the graceful, sensual, and athletic Laura Croft. This Laura Croft now turned into this huge, waddling, clumsy mess because of that brat inside of her belly. I, though, how could anyone want to see this happen to Laura? And what evil creature could wreck her wonderful body with these changes? This Laura would skillfully and gracefully make feats of athletic genius in order to save artifacts from around the world. This Laura is now clumsily banging into priceless vases and tripping over slight obstacles because of her pregnant form. This hack had to be work of someone who had both powerful women and ancient artifacts. Could this hack be the work of Islamic State Group? <laughs> Enough pondering, I have to get to the end of this level, which I did. Week 24, part one. The level started in a hallway where the rooms aligned with skin, but you could see Breek Fuck, but you could see brick ne but fuck, but you could see brick beneath the skin. As I moved lower further, the skin began to have layers of fat beneath it, and you could see less of the walls. At the end of this hallway, Laura was given an Egyptian bed to rest in, and she slept for a long while. And I got her to, and I got I got to watch her sleep Sims styled. I also noticed that you could see her belly twitch and move about as she slept. Laura did seem very uncomfortable in that warm bed, except that she did keep waking up because of what seemed to be a serve pain, <laughs> be a serve pain in her legs, which caused her to try and massage it with her hands. Laura also seemed to be getting very hot in bed, as if she was burning up. It took a while for Laura to be relaxed enough as not to be bothered by these things, and at that point, we went into her dreams. Laura was having very vivid dreams. At first, Laura's in her mansion, and she was with her baby who was walking around and talking. At first, you can't hear what he's saying, and then, fuck, and then it becomes clear. Hail Satan! I, I will be born on the sixth day of the sixth month of the sixth year of this decade, and my rule draws near. The he looks at Laura with evil black red eyes and hisses. Week 24 part two. The next disturbing dream was have Laura underneath ice and trying to get it out was at this stage that it was not water but blood and not ice but frozen blood. Laura was drowning and her oxygen bar was going lower and lower. Soon, she almost out of air when she appears in a room, not only a room, but a pitch black room, where you can't see anything. Soon the room became full of screaming demons, and they were screaming so horribly that it made my ears hurt. Then a big demon who seemed to be their king arose from the crowd and boosted. Soon my son will be born and then all light shall end in this world. Then he laughed a horrible laugh. Then Wara, <laughs> Wara. Then Laura woke up screaming and when she woke up, Laura quickly got out of bed, but then, she seemed to get very... What? Are you, are you okay? Did I boop you? Come here. Come here. Come on. Yay. Oh, hi. Oh, you're so loud. Yes, little Luna interlude. Hi. Stay. No, no, stay. Stay. You can stay. It's okay. Hi. No, oh, you're so fluffy. Oh, you're going to be on the desk now? Don't bump the mic. Stop hitting the mic. Stop it. <laughs> what? What's the matter? 
fake smooch. Oh my. Okay, I need you to get back down now. Yep, I need you. There you go. Good job. Good baby. Go. <laughs> You're so lazy. Come come here, little bush. Bushy. So many pets. Where was I? Oh, and then uh, my rule draws the air. Blah 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 blah. Soon she was almost out of air when she appears. In a room, yeah, no, I already got that. Soon the room became full of screaming demons. Then a big demon who seemed to be their king arose from the crowd and boosted. Yeah, no, I already did that. Then Laura woke up screaming and then she woke up. Laura quickly got out of bed, but then seemed to get very dizzy and had to recover for a few seconds. It was then a thought came to me. A dreadful thought. Is Laura the mother of the Antichrist? It seemed to make too much sense because it would make sense for the first evil deed of the Antichrist to be the ruining of the wonderful Laura Croft, taking away her form, her agility, her gracefulness, and independence. He's probably taking glee in treating Laura's body like some... Hey, no zoomies. Calm down. Calm down. All right, well, who cares? I'm drunk anyway. Uh, like some playground and making her heavy and clumsy. This is only the beginning of his reign of terror. If he could do this to Laura Croft before he's born, just what would he do to mankind? I really started to think that Laura Croft is pregnant with the Antichrist, but I was also too scared to really think that. Week 24, Part 3 as Laura moved across the next area, I noticed that her posture had changed and she was now moving more and more forwards, making her spine more curved. As I moved her forward further through the halls, they began to have hairs growing from them. There was hair growing out of the very walls and then there was this terrifying hand that tried to grab Laura and kill her. It had long fingernails and were trying to claw her to death. I managed to maneuver Laura through this horrible room. And when she got to the end, Laura was hold her butt and sometimes scratching it. <laughs> oh my god, is does Laura <laughs> Oh my god, is Laura does have hemorrhoids? <laughs> oh my god, is does Laura have hemorrhoids? Surely they surely not they couldn't do that to Laura as well. Then we came to another area. And it was those damn lung trees again, breathing in clean air and out poisonous gas. These looked even more developed, though, and even more disturbing looking. I don't even want to say how disturbing they looked. It was too much for me. Here, Laura found a chest with an ancient music box with a leads coming out of it. And text that when translated, <laughs> translated, said that Laura could use this to soothe the baby. So it worked that the box could play music into Laura's womb so they, by, so they baby could hear it. Though when I got Laura to do this, it made disturbing, unnerving music that only the devil could love. Then the next area was in a big room and then a timer came on saying that Laura only had a few minutes before this room would be bathed in fire. Luckily there was an escape craft and I guided Laura into it, but she had difficulty doing the seatbelt up because of her growing body and I was worried that these would stop her from leaving as she not might be able to do her seatbelt up what eventually she did so and she escaped in the craft week 25 part 1 Laura was now in another Egyptian room this had pools of water and was Laura was in a swimsuit that was more built for the changes in her figure. This gave me more of a visual of her bump, and it was at this point I noticed she had stretch marks. These seemed to cause Laura more <laughs> disconfante, and she sometimes stopped to scratch them. When I moved her towards one of the pools, she stopped at a wall and gathered them some cream that she rubbed onto her belly. What? There were faces on the walls near the pool and they kept yawning and sighing, which creeped me out to no end. As Laura was coming to further into the pool, a loud noise was heard and she clutched her belly because it had clearly caused the baby to leap inside of her. There, what was causing the noise came out of it was a sea serpent blood running from its teeth. 
and it also had hard, evil black eyes. I forded off with our lo- with what? With Lore fighting it with the Uzis and grenade launcher, which did good damage and killed it. The creature thrashed around, bleeding much, and died. That boss battle was not too bad, but it was made harder, but the more slippery s- controls and Laura seemed to be getting more hard to handle as the weight on her body shifted more. The game gave me an option to shift her outfit and I noticed that when I changed her into sports shoes, she became a little easier to handle. As a reward for killing this serpent, Laura was given spa treatment by the spirits of the dead to ease the pains of her pregnancy. I want to play Pokemon now. I don't have any Pokemon games installed. I might install some Pokemon games after this. Week 25 Part 2. It turned out that this Arla- Lara Croft is in- is in what? <laughs> Fuck. It turned out that this R- Alright. It turned out that this R that Lara Croft is in is underwater and that is underwater Egyptian ruins like some sunken city. I realized this because when I needed to move Laura onwards after her spa treatment, there was a door that led to a small submarine, which when Laura entered, showed how deep she is under the sea. The water around her was really cold, but the submarine was keeping her warm. I moved her onwards to the section in which I controlled the submarine. This led to another section of the underwater ruins, which were far more disturbing and full on dark. There were these creatures that looked like monstrous prehistoric men, but with fish for heads. I got Laura to launch grenades at them, but they blocked them with ice shields and advanced. I knew of no way to fight them until Laura found the new weapon for this. Part a plasma cannon, and she fuck. Part a plasma cannon, and she burned through them like butter. Talking of butter. Laura seemed to be able to need to eat more to keep her strength up as the survival mechanics onto the player. This added more frustration to the game as I had to keep Laura stocked with meals and snacks. This also had a revolting side effect of making Laura gassy and needed to let wind or burp. This was truly disgusting and didn't know who would want to do that to her. Was this some sick game dev putting their fetish into the game? If so, they should have chosen another girl than my Laura. She has always been the sexiest woman imaginable, and this hack seemed to be doing everything imaginable to ruin that, and ruin Laura. This was almost the last straw for me, (laughs) and I hated the bastard who made this hack for what he's doing to Laura and Laura's baby for making her go through all of this, and also for possibly being the Antichrist. Week 25, Part 3. Laura then came at last at the end of the stage, and the boss emerged. It was a giant head with bleeding eyes and a forked tongue. It breathed plasma at her and tried licking Laura. The walls were also bleeding red, blood, (laughs) and gore. I skillfully avoided the attacks and got Laura to concentrate attack fire on the evil creature. Soon Laura was able to destroy this abomination and then Hather appeared again to Laura and told her that she would help and support. Laura, I thought that was a fucking period, support Laura through this pregnancy as she then vanished again but (laughs) I knew Laura had her support. I closed off the game, not wanting to see any more and I went to bed. Though. I soon wished I hadn't, as I had nightmares. In the first, I was in a crowded train with nowhere to sit. And soon, I managed to sit in an area that is usually reserved for disabled, elderly, and pregnant women. As sat there. (laughs) Fuck. As sat there. I was poke on the shoulder and was told by the ticket officer that there is an expectant mother who needs to take my seat. So I looked up and saw that this expectant mother was none other than pregnant Laura Croft. And she was crying blood from her eyes and screamed the most horrific, unnatural, demonic scream. I woke up in fright, or so I thought I had. The scream was still ringing in my ears. What do you mean you thought you had? I sat on my bed on the second floor of my house and gives a good view of the forest that goes around our town. As I looked out onto the forest, I got this feeling that I shouldn't make so much noise and that there was something nearby. 
I kept as quiet as possible, but then I needed the toilet and knocked something off of my bedside table getting up. Then I heard it, a noise that started quiet and distant, but got louder and closer. I tried to make it out before realizing that it was uh, that terrifying scream that Laura made. <laughs> and it was, getting it was getting louder and closer. Then, pregnant Laura Croft flew past my window, screaming like a banshee from hell's deepest, darkest depths. And as she flew past my window, I saw every feature of her agonizing face. Her eyes were black and bleeding, her hair long and dark. Her pregnant belly protruded to a much greater extent than I have seen before, and her breasts, large and swollen, were now leaking dark blood. As I took in that horrifying blood-curdling sight, her screams became deafening and eldritch, like very horrors of hell itself. Then I woke screaming myself at the top of my lungs until I heard my neighbor shouting at me <laughs> through my walls saying that they have work tomorrow and I'm keeping them up. But what does he know of my suffering? Or Laura's? Nothing, the ignorant fool. The next day, I continued the game again. I know this may seem stupid at this stage, but I had to see how this ends. I had to see what happens to Laura and how the game ends. Fuck, you just keep going. Week 26, part one. As I now understand things, Laura Croft must be in third semester now. Trimester now. <laughs> this would mean that only three stages remain and this demonic hack would soon be over with. In this, in this stage, Laura's six month, she starts off in a frozen wasteland. Must lech. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Must lech. Much like the lowest level of hell and the divine comedy, Laura was now wearing winter gear, but you could still very clearly make out her large abdomen through even this gear. Fuck, I got the hiccups. Laura soon reached a cave and it was pitch black, but there was a large pair of red and black eyes in the darkness. The eyes soon showed that they belonged to a hideous face and it roared loudly at Laura, and her flight or fight response kicked in. I got her to fight and kill the being with the weapon found in the previous stage. Week 26, Part 2 Then as I guided Laura through mo most of the stage, I saw a dark figure putting his arms around Laura and covering her belly with his hands. The figure was just a shadow, so Laura didn't see her, but I did. This must be none other than Satan himself, and he is hoarding with his shadow form. The womb of Laura Croft, who is carrying his demonic offspring that will bring in the day of final judgment and the last battle between good and evil. The figure was doing demonic whisperings in Latin and Greek and English and Spanish and German and even <laughs> Oh my god. The figure was doing demonic whisperings in Latin and Greek and English, and Spanish, and German, and even Cambodian <laughs> sometimes. Though was sounds of a woman crying, but it wasn't Laura crying. Then I realized the crying sound of the woman crying is the devil's laughter, and I almost screamed. The figure eventually went, and we were in a cave where the walls were made up of nerve endings, and then floating brains and jars attack Laura. I got her to fight them off with her usual gun, but it was a difficult battle, and they took a lot to take down. These brains were smooth, so they must not be that smart, but did pack a punch. Then Laura reached a further reach of the cave, and there is this big brain that mostly smooth, but does have some wrinkles and is connected to the nerves of the cave. The baby started to kick hard in Laura's belly, trying to get her to avoid this thing. Yet, Laura found a weapon that allowed her to transform... <laughs> the kicks of the baby and the movements and womb into powerful sonic weapons. So, she harnessed the powerful kicks and turned them into a blast that killed the big brain. This weapon will only get more powerful as the pregnancy progresses and this also makes up for what Laura loses through lack of mobility, I realized. 
Though I also realize that this is further proof that this baby is the Antichrist, and this confirmed by Demonic Whispery saying, Kiss to his majesty's boot, and kneel to the power of him. Week 23 part, I mean fuck, week 26 part 3. This weapon could utilize different baby moments to do different types of damage. For example, somersaults could make an enemy flip in the air and kick th uh, kicks could throw an enemy backwards. Though the enemy, fuck, though the weapon could only be used when the baby is moving, there was no way to influence what kind of movements he, was, he would do. Laura could get him to start moving by playing with or poking her belly, but that wasn't a reliable thing to do when under attack. Oh, I'm not going to see how far I have to go. I, I got to just finish it through. Ah, now let's see how far we go. We're at one, week 26, part 3 out of part 2. We have... Oh, fuck. All right. We have week 30, but there's several parts per story. Laura could get him to start moving by playing with or poking her belly, but that wasn't a reliable thing to do when under attack. As I moved Laura through the cave, she seemed to become hotter the more she exercised and would often need to take some layers off after moving around too much, even in this cold climate. Yet, after standing still for a while, she would soon cool down and become cold once again. I need to put these clothing layers back on. Speaking of warmth, at the end of this level, Laura found a log cabin in this cave and had a good meal, then changed into ma maternity PJs and went to bed. <laughs> However, <laughs> Laura seemed... Not to be able to sleep as every time she started to relax, the baby would kick her. Then, she, when she did sleep, disturbing nightmares would happen to her, and I would have to move her around hellish nightmare landscapes where she has to avoid demons and such. I dread to think what would happen if I failed any of those, or let Laura die in any of those nightmares, but I thankfully never found out, as they were not too hard, just very scary. Each nightmare would be broken up by Laura, either getting up to urinate or being woken up and being kicked. Then, as morning came, week 27. The next day started with the image of an eyelid opening dramatically and an eye protected by a fine membrane looking out. Laura woke up with a fright and struggled to raise herself out of bed. Laura soon was in her winter gear, and leaving the cabin and continuing onwards, the rest of the cave had more monsters, and that I got Lauren to fight off. Though sometimes Laura would stop when walking as if something had just knocked the wind out of her, and realized that this was the baby kicking her in the ribs or lungs. This was horrible to realize. This demonic brat was treating the great Laura Croft. <laughs> the sensual, athletic, and wonderful Laura Croft, like a punching bag. It made me sick that this had to happen to the great Laura Croft, who I admired and was always a very attracted to. Even worse, sometimes, Laura would lift her cloth enough to see her bare belly, and there would and there see an imprint of a foot or hand or general movement of her belly. This was terrible to watch, and the game kept making me see the see things like this happen to Laura Croft, as if it wanted me to see everything that she was suffering through. This went on as we went through the cavern and to the end of this horror ride that ended at the gates of a great snow temple, and here Laura needed to rest again. This time she slept in a stone outhouse that was kept warm via steam coming from the earth. Though Laura took a while getting to sleep, as the size of her belly was making her uncomfortable. And then she kept getting kicks that would stop her from sleeping or jolt her awake. Then it was back to more nightmare parts where I had to navigate. Laura, across her disturbing nightmares, I keep thinking there's periods. This being again broken up by Laura waking to get up or urinate or being kicked. Then, again, when morning comes. Week 28, part 1. Now it was time to enter the temple, and I moved Laura to its entrance, and at the entrance there was more of these yawning faces that disturbed me. They yawned out of bubbles of air that did damage, and I had to get Laura to avoid them. There was a long run up to the temple's entrance, and I was worried if Laura could make it. She needed to catch more food and eat more in general, as it seemed that she needed enough calories to meet the demands of the baby and her growing body, but she keeps burning them off. 
In the temple itself, there was a long stretch of scented water that Laura now and her water were descended into. It was deep, but at the same time looked warm and almost steamy. This might sound like a very sensual and erotic setting, but that would have been the case. If, if Laura is not pregnant, this was further highlighted when Laura came out of the pool and for a split second, I saw that she's now wearing largely ungainly cotton underneath between underneath her fucking clothes fuck man to cover the bottom of her belly this is what has become of the sexy laura croft it does sin against gaming to have laura look like this if this had been a sensual or sexy bathing scene it would have maybe lulled me into thinking this place would not be so bad but now i was already expecting horror and disgust. <laughs> I was expecting to be able to get to the level now, but no, of course not. The game made me watch as Laura measured her bump. It made notes on a bump, <laughs> on a bump chart on her book, then pressed it with her hands, and this went on and on. This game was really rubbing in, and this was not even disturbing now, but boring, and that is something that Laura Croft should never be boring. This is what these satanic devs and this satanic antichrist baby were doing to Laura Croft. Week 28, part two. When this was finally over, I got her to move more and I got to a portion of the temple that was straight corridors and rooms to ritual cambers and there it happened. Eyes appeared on the walls of the temple and chambers around Laura watching her. <laughs> Jesus, they were bleeding blood and there was satanic chanting that could be heard. I got her to shot out several eyes, but some shot lasers at her, and I got her to doge quickly. Laura soon prevailed, but it was a dangerous battle, and it was very difficult. So then Laura got a message from Hather telling her that the coldest part of the region is just up ahead. So Laura was changed back into her winter wear, though it seemed to be modified to have layers that could be removed as she started to get too hot. There was the boss of this stage, and it was Bella Goth from The Sims 2, but mutated and covered with eyes, and she said, Laura, you now that you are going to be a mother, you belong to The Sims. And I was horrified hearing this, but it made sense. They were going to turn Laura into one of those stupid Sims women that have wants based around social stuff instead of doing epic adventures and spend their time having affairs, getting pregnant, and, <laughs> and burning down their houses because they can't cook. Well, that's not going to be Laura's fate, I shouted and took on the boss. Laura fired grenades at Bella, but it did nothing. And then she saw lasers at her and still nothing. Finally, Laura got a good kick to her lungs from the baby and, transfer and transferred its power to the wave gun and said to Bella, You Sims game make pregnancy look all lovey-dovey, but that's not real pregnancy. You couldn't even take a real kick to the stomach and like this. And she fired the kick at Bella, and Bella screamed. No! Damn you, Laura Croft! And the oven next to Bella caught fire and, <laughs> and burned her alive like a witch at the stake or something. <laughs> then, week 29, part 1. At this stage, at the, oh fuck, at the start of this stage, Lara Croft is in some medieval convent. The type they put nuns in and she is in a room. There is medieval chanting in the background and I think this must be nice chanting, but the more I heard of it, the more demonic it sounded. Nuns were put in this convent, just like, and forced to give up their lives to become women of God, just like Laura had been forced into this satanic pregnancy. This must be a subtle message on the game devs, who are clearly pure evil. I had the Laura out of there, and I so I moved her out of the nuns' quarters and into a hallway, and there was an evil sound, and the walls started dripping blood. The blood kept dripping until it became waterfalls of blood. Here's a random thought. 
Does anyone ever remember the show Greg the Bunny? It was with Seth Green. It was about like a bunch of like adult fucking puppets, like or like like Muppets. I missed that show. That was an incredible show. Hey, you get. All right. <laughs> Then a hideous being with a cord attached to his head like that scary Dr. Chandard in Hellraiser 2 came over, and I saw that the figure was none other than Pierre Dupont, but his eyes were gone, and instead were black and red dotes like Sonic.x, and he had not eyelids and bleached white face, just like Jeff the Killer. H. mocked Lara Croft for being preggers, and said it is time for her to admit defeat. But Laura was standing strong, so he left. <laughs> so he left. Week 29, part... Week... Week 29, part 2. Laura then headed to a new room and found that everything there was related to childbirth and pregnancy. This annoyed her because she was looking for a rare document about the location of a powerful amulet. But all the books were about pregnancy, and she had enough of hearing about that. Then, as Laura looked frustrated through the books, she got madder and madder until she almost exploded with angry. And then she got sharp pain in her lower back and had grown in pain. I had to take Laura through more rooms to find what she was looking for. And then, she was attacked by those big gray discs from stage 4, which I now realize are giant placentas. She luckily now had more resources to fight them off and was able to avoid their disgusting attacks and destroy them. What? Where was I? There we go. I was confident that they were going to do this and so was Laura. She had a look of determination on her face and I moved her to the main library. But on the way there, dark patches appeared on her chest where braces had... Where braces? Where breasts had been and it was clear that Laura had sprung a leak. She was leaking milk. This was further proof that the people who made this were pure evil. Who would have that happen to Laura Croft? Why have that happened to her? Hasn't she suffered enough humiliation? Now you have to add to it? This is inhuman to do this to Laura Croft. And to make things worse, this is her classic outfit that is now being wetted with beast milk. Did they hate Laura Croft this much? Now Laura had to clean herself up after that embarrassing leakage. But once she did, she was on the mission again. Week 29, part three. It was found that in order to get to the library, there had to be three puzzles solved. The first was moving heavy blocks to pressure plates, so I had to get Laura to very carefully, and I mean very carefully, bend to pick these objects up. First, she had to stand close to the object with one foot in front of the other. Then she bent her knees and then she straightened them so that she used her thigh muscles to lift. Making sure she did not lock her knees and instead bend from her waist with her knees bent, I put this much detail to show how much tedious this was. And she had to do this each time and took ages. Then she had to push a heavy block into a head and switch and I mean she couldn't push. I mean, uh, fuck. <laughs> And I mean, she couldn't pull it, only push. This was really hard, as if you made a mistake, you had to get Laura to slowly go around and push it back. Eventually, I did this one, and that was a one to go. Then she had to slide underneath a tomb that the last switch opened to get the, the keys to the library, and each time Laura had to slowly bend down and lie on the surface, and then when she wanted to get up, make sure her hips, pelvis, and back are aligned in the same direction, and then roll on her side and use her arms to push herself up. This was all very tedious. Then, when Laura got to the library, she had to look through a whole host of information, and I had to get her to the bookshelf by bookshelf. As I did, the place got more creepy and uncanny until it got real disturbing. There was blood pouring down the walls, and the ceiling went black, and there was demonic chanting and whispers. Then as soon as Laura found the book, everything went back to normal again. Now Laura had the book. It was the end of the level, and then week 30, part 1. Laura was now in a hospital that was connected to the nunnery, and it is an abandoned hospital and very disturbing. There's waiting rooms full of skeletons. I'm just going to drink. 
It's all, we're almost done. We're almost empty. Not done with the story, but we're almost empty. Well, I mean, we're almost done with the drink. Oh, fuck. We are done with the drink. Let's go. This is fucking torture at this point. Uh, waiting room full of skeletons who had died <laughs> while waiting for an appointment. There was operating rooms with people cut open like they had been left mid-surgery, and all the walls were blood red. Some rooms were even flooded with blood, and the blood is slippery, like an ice level. There are also old wheelchairs resting in the corridors, and prams resting in the corridors. <laughs> it was then that horrible baby crying started again, and the Labrador Town theme. As Laura walked the corridor, a zombie nurse came up to her and said, The doctor will see you now. And there was a, <laughs> and there was a sadistic German doctor who said, <laughs> Yeah, surgery is open, mein Freilein. <laughs> it was then I realized that this was an insane asylum, as well as a monastery, nunnery, and hospital. This is because the sadistic doctor is performing shock therapy on Laura Croft's butler. What? And Larson Conway slumped in the corner after being given a lobotomy. I had to get Laura out there, out there. Fuck. I had to get Laura out there fast because he was ready to perform operation with <laughs> without atheism on Laura Croft. Oh no. Without atheism on Laura Croft. Week 30, part 2. So Laura ran and got, and I got her into another part of the complex, and that baby crying started again, as well as a woman screaming in pain. It was then I realized this was not only a monastery, nunnery, hospital, and insane asylum. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, you, what are you doing? Hey. Look at you. Oh, stop kicking. Be nice to me. Where was I? Who cares? <laughs> Uh, it was then I realized that this was not only a monastery, a nunnery, a hospital, an insane asylum, but also an orphanage and maternity ward. Fuck. This is because in the room Laura Croft is looking in, there is Evelyn, Amanda Everett. I thought that said Amelia Earhart <laughs> on a hospital bed giving birth and screaming in pain. This made Laura look worried because she knew that she might have to go through such pain. Then there are these creepy ghost children who try to touch Laura's womb and chant creepy nursery rhymes. Then there is this ghost woman who had pale white skin. So pale you could see her organs and long dark hair that covers her face. She kept trying to grab Laura by the womb. And it was then I realized that she wants to steal Laura's baby because she lost her own. I got Laura to run. And as I did... Laura passed rooms with several other powerful women video game heroines who are heavily pregnant, about to give birth or giving birth. Samus was having an ultrasound in one room, her belly bulging out like a mountain. Mona Sachs from Max Payne was in max painful labor in another. Chun Li was looking like she was going to burst at any moment in another. Nina Williams had just broken water in another. Aya Brea looking more like a parasite Eve in another. Chow screaming as she had to contract her portal. Even Resident Evil babes were like this. And Catalina from GTA and Mara Jade from the Star Wars games. I know that just canically had been, but still. Then, even God, even Faith Connors, Katana, Kasumi, Mashiranui, and Joanna Dark were in rooms heavily pregnant and about to burst. There was probably many more in other rooms I ran Laura past, but I just couldn't take it anymore. I had Laura run while I covered my eyes. It was all too much to take this game as pure evil. I could stand to see all these strong badass women like this being turned into pregnant women or having to painfully give birth. This heck, the very embodiment of evil. Who but someone evil would want to force that upon these badass women? Week 30, Part 3 After I got Laura through this nursery of horrors, she was now in room with man such different organs and specimens in glass tubes, including animals and deformed babies. In the middle of this room, Laura stopped and lifted her tank top, and you could see her hyper-realistic movement. Hey, Got another one! In her belly! 
And by hyper-realistic, I mean you see Alora's belly move and distort to such detail that you could tell which movements were kicks, or hiccups, or somersaults. This was disgusting to see. I wanted to move Laura further through this level, not watch Laura's once a bed belly squirm like this. Though even though I hated seeing this happen to Laura, I still could not help but marvel at the size of her belly, and knew that she would still have to get bigger, seeing that she's only seven months, and those other women in the pervious wombs had gotten larger still. It was then I realized that Laura's face seemed much more swollen and puffy like that horrible image in the title screen. Also, her skin seemed to have a much more rosy glow to it, and her fingers and ankles seemed to have been swollen as well. I could not but think but think. Fuck, I could not think but think. How could they do this to you, Laura? It was then I realized that Laura was also short of breath from running that corridor. This was the athletic Laura Croft this is an outrage that she is reduced to this. That she is be reduced to this. Week 30, part 4. <laughs> I moved Laura across the room and then all the glass tubes burst open and the heating pipes of the room began to swell and became the color of red. It was then I realized that the pipes were swelling with blood and they swelled to their maximum and poured blood all over the floor. I had to get Laura out of there fast. So I made her run and run and run. Laura got out of the room before she was drawn in blood and or was killed by one of the specimens. Laura got to the hall and had to run more because the blood was pouring out of the door and onto the floor. I, I got Laura to run and run and run. And alas, <laughs> there was an airlock at the end of the corridor. I got Laura to open the airlock and then close it just in time before the hallway flooded with blood. The airlock prevented the blood from getting into the Laura Laura. Fuck. The airlock prevented the blood from getting into the room Laura is in, and thus, I got Laura to place of safety behind the airlock. There was a bed there and another door. I wanted Laura to go through the other door, but she was so tired and exhausted that she went on the bed without my control and fell asleep. Uh, my four loco has been emptified. I have decided that is a word. Uh, and that's a good thing, because that thing tasted like shit, but this is part three. This is the final part, but it's still, it's still going to be a very, very, very long story. So I grabbed myself some spiced rum, and we are going to continue. Week 31, part one. Laura woke up, and she now had breasts bared. Now this would normally be something that every Tomb Raider fan would love to see, but this is pregnant Laura Croft we're talking about here. Now her breasts seemed to give her discomfort, which never happened before. They also seemed full and heavy. Her areolas had become darker and dotted with small bumps. She dressed herself and moved to the next room, in a large room full of clots. Oh shit. She dressed herself and moved to the next room, in a large room full of cots that had demon babies in them. This made sense, this was some kind of demonic birthing ward, and that horrible crying started again. Laura had to move past the area and thankfully the babies were in sealed cots, so they could not attack Laura. I got Laura to the end and the cots opened and the babies began to crawl towards her, some on the ground and some on the walls and some on the ceiling. I got Laura to open the door just in time before she was devoured and she came to another room. There was now an office and it had a list of the different women in the hospital, and how many babies they were having, and their health conditions and type of birth, etc. Laura read the list, and it said things like, Chun Li is having twins, and wants a natural birth, and that Samus is having a girl, is wanting, what? Oh, and is wanting a water birth, or that Faith Connors, Katana, Kasumi, Mejoaz, <laughs> whatever, they're all overdue by two weeks. This was disturbing to read, so I had to look away. I didn't want to see that kind of information about these once badass women. Then Laura went, yeah, then Laura went past an exercise room with several of the women mentioned in the list being put through birthing exercises. I had to get her past that quickly, or they would put her in the class. Week 31, part two. Then Laura entered a room full of bones and skeletons. 
and some were chained to walls. Others were on the stretch rack, and others were chained to saps. There was this one guy who was still alive, and blood is dripping on his head, like Chinese water torture. And Laura saw that the blood had dripped a hole in his skull, and he smiled the most insane smile that smile, yeah, insane smile at Laura. She had to move on fast, but then blood and bones dripped from the ceiling as it started to bulge unnaturally, and it was going to bursts. So, Laura had to move fast, and I got her to the door, <laughs> just before it flooded the floor with blood, guts, and gore. Laura then reached the bedroom again, and she looked terrified, and images of all that blood and the badass women, like Mona Sachs and Shell, who were in painful labor, flashed across the screen, so much that Laura fainted on the bed. She seems terrified of giving birth. Week 32, Part 1 Laura had not only fainted but also fallen asleep, and she seemed dazed. Thus, she rolled over on her side and raised herself up. As Laura moved, she looked down and surprised as her navel seemed to have popped and was now protruding outwards. The maternity version of the tank top... <laughs> That Laura normally wears now doesn't seem to be enough to fully cover her growing belly, and it pokes out like a giant eye, with a protruding navel like the pupil. I couldn't believe that this protruding navel was that once perfectly formed navel of the athletic Laura Croft. This was horrible. How much more was Laura going to have to go through? Then Laura came to another room where music is playing, and this caused Laura's baby to become more active as she clutched her belly so she had to sway gently to rock it to sleep. This was even more gross for me, that Laura's sensual and athletic form was now like some living cradle. It was at this point I realized that Laura's entire body movement must have been rocking the baby to sleep from the second trimester. Her body had been acting like a cradle all this time. This is an insult to fans of Laura and fans of Tomb Raider and to Laura Croft herself. I had to get her out of that room, and the next one was disturbing, because the walls were pink and fleshy. There were also bones instead of pillars, and muscles instead of steel support beams. I ran Laura down this hall and it started to fill with that fat blobby walls of fat that were going to engulf Laura if I did not get to her if I did not get her to move faster. I ran her to the end and got her to safety at her. The next area was a maze of twisting corridors and nooks and crannies. Week 32, Part 2. This was hard even though there is a map because parts of them disappear. Because Laura's baby brain keeps forgetting things. Also, now that Laura is getting bigger, she seems to have less of a concentration span. This meant that I kept getting her to wake... Fuck. This meant that I kept getting her to make wrong turnings and also end up going down different paths that she had already been. Because she had forgot that she had already been there. I also noticed that Laura's belly was moving when she walked, swaying from side to side with each step she took. Her belly was also kept bumping into objects and the walls causing her to step backwards. Then I saw that there was a shortcut I could take Laura through to the exit. It was a small gap, but one that should be no problem to Laura Croft, except that when I tried to get her through that gap, she got stuck in this tight hall. It was then I realized that this would have posed no problem to normal Laura Croft, but because Laura is now getting so big, she can't get through this area without getting stuck. So, now, I had to wait for Laura to slowly try and free herself. It was like the game was mocking me and Laura by putting a tempting shortcut like that so that Laura would get stuck to rub it in, just how ungainly and big she is now. So I had to get Laura to take the long way around and got to the door. Laura opened it, and the next room had a corridor which walls were mad of muscles that were trying to squish her. There were also these hounds that were made of pure muscle that tried to attack her, and I had to fight them off. I soon got Laura out of there, and the next corridor was sweating constantly, which was really disgusting, but then it started to sweat blood, which ran down the walls, and there was a scream. I got Laura out of there fast. Then Laura was in a room with a tube that led down to a pool of water and Laura had to get through the tube before the room flooded with blood. I had to try and position Laura in the best way to get through it. After finding out that she wouldn't go feet first, the only way to get the fit through was to get her to go head 
fuck, man. Uh, go head first, which is really hard. After this, Laura fell into the water and landed gently, and airlocked sealed the tube to stop the blood pouring all over the pool and Laura Croft. The room landed in wasn't that safe, though. It was as it was really hot, and there was fire monsters that Laura had to fight off. Laura also seemed really hot in this room, had difficulty keeping herself cool. There, she found a new weapon that would let her use, uh, fucking, who cares? Colostrums drained from her breast as weapon to spray at the monsters. This was super effective against the fire monsters, and it put them out. Then Laura reached the next room, and there was a bed for her to sleep on again. God damn, this is so fucking... It's not even entertaining more. I'm just bored. I mean, let's see, we have... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four stories to go. <sighs> then Laura reached the next room and there was a bed for her to sleep on again and she did, but she had a really difficulty getting to sleep and kept tossing and turning. When Laura did get to sleep, the boss of this stage was a dream demon, and she had to fight this demon off in her dreams, and the dreams of her unborn child. Like in that scary film, <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child, which is the scariest of the Nightmare <laughs> on Elm Street films, and still gives me nightmares to this day. She fought this demon off with all her might, and it used all of her attacks against... The fight took place in all kinds of dreams, worlds, <laughs> including Laura's mansion, stages from the first game and other previous stages of this hack. This was a long, complex boss battle, and I couldn't get into it too much detail, but I beat the boss when Laura gained her dream powers, like in Nightmare on Elm Street 4, and that super tough Nightmare on Elm Street NES game. Then Laura used her dream warrior powers to destroy the dream demon, and save herself and the baby from its evil. Then the stage ended and I had to go to bed because I had something that I needed to get up early for. However, that night, I had a nightmare that I don't think was even a nightmare, but a real ghost or a demon that came to me in my sleep, and I think is fundamental proof that this game is haunted or possessed. I was sleeping in my bed when I woke up and found hair in front of my face. Just masses of long hair in front of my face, and I found it was hanging from my ceiling. Then I looked up and saw something that still scares me to this day. Hanging from the ceiling was Laura Croft. There's a fucking, like, police siren in the background. Shut the fuck up. I'm reading. She is heavily pregnant and carrying a baby, and her hair was hanging straight from the ceiling to my face. It was at this point I realized that this was not Laura Croft, or even a woman, but some unholy creature, some monstrous horror or demon from another world. Laura was leaning towards me and I could feel her breath and the demonic aura of her evil baby. I just closed my eyes and prayed to all of the gods and saints and prophets that I've ever been, including Jesus. Then I heard Laura, or whatever, was pretending to be her scream in pain, horror, and anger, and anger, and anger, then she was gone. I now sleep with holy symbols around my bed to make sure that she, or it, never comes to me again. Hunting the store. So that day, when I was out, I made sure to stop at the store I bought the game from, but when I got to that rundown creepy town, the store had vanished. It had gone completely, the entire building itself had vanished, and I never found nor trace of it. It was like it never existed at all, or only existed for enough time to sell this cursed game, and then vanish. I returned home, now determined to finish this accursed game once and all. Oh, uh, for whatever. Once and for all time. Though when I came home, my desktop background was set to a terrifying image of pregnant Laura Croft, with blood running from her eyes and blood all around her. She looked just like that demon version of Laura Croft that I saw hanging over my bed. I tried changing the desktop, but I couldn't. And so I turned on the game, even more determined to finish it. Once and for all. Then, we were in the next stage. Week 33. For some reason, it's like... Like, written in Japanese. <sighs> Laura seemed even bigger than before, and it seemed like that belly would keep growing. Laura was now in Japan, and she was rubbing 
moisturizing cream on her belly before she dressed herself. Now she had a full Camino on, but you could still see her protruding navel through her clothes. I moved Laura through this Japanese-style castle and there was a hall with giant mouths that kept swallowing insects and other creatures. Unfortunately, there was a key lo uh, fuck Laura needed in that room and she had to try and get it without being swallowed. I managed to get her to pick it up and get out of there fast. As I moved Laura out of that room, I kept noticing that she keeps putting her hand beneath her bulging belly to give it support, or her legs and pelvis a rest. The key unlocked a room with Tino in it, and it was putting its hands, eyes, and jagged claws over Laura. I had to get her to fight the Tino off and did damage to its eyes and hands. So Laura prevailed, but I had to get her to use a healing item because she took damage. The tin home was guarding a key that Laura picked up and entered another room. This room was full of Japanese women who were all pregnant and giving Laura advice as they spoke. I began to notice something off. Then they started giving Laura dried leaves, and I saw that they were all cuddling dead babies. Then I realized that these were all, whatever, ubume, uh, who cares, the spirits of women who died in childbirth or while pregnant. I knew that I had to get Laura out of there fast, or she would join their band, like the Beatles. So I had to move fast, Laura fast, and these, whatever, advanced on Laura to try and kill her. I got her out of this room only to find more, whatever, coming out of rooms to try and grab Laura, and then I find out that Laura had to run through an entire hall of whatever. This must be some kind of evil castle, I though, where many mother and pregnant women died and they all want Laura dead so she can join them. I got Laura out of this section of the castle. Week 34. Laura had come to another room where she had gone down and shooed head first, and I knew what to do this time. She did not land roughly, and those shouts she was okay. Then Laura was in a dark room, and there were only candles to light the way. Then you could hear that heart beat again, and there was eyes in the darkness. It made a loud sound and scampered away. The sound made the baby leap in Laura's womb, and she grasped herself because this made shock her. It was then I realized that this was Mo Moko Mokorin, which is a homeless Yahweh. <laughs> which is a homeless yokai. <laughs> that live inside walls and give a fright to unsuspecting people like Laura. I moved Laura out of this room, but she seemed tired and she had to take a break before she continued. The movements in Laura's belly began to become more obvious and increasingly so from this level onwards. I don't know why this is, but it is so. Then Laura had to get out of this area and onto a Japanese train to get her next location that is still within Japan. Fucking cat's loader box, dude. Damn. I kind of want pizza. After this store, I'm going to get pizza. I'm going to play Skyrim. Fucking hell yeah. Hell yeah. Do I want to get wings? What time does Papa John's close? Better pizza, better ingredients. Fuck my life. Um, da -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. uh, then Laura had to get out of this area and onto a Japanese train. Do -do 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 -do. Now Laura is on a train, and there's a guy taking up reserve seat who looks like me. Oh, so we're going back in time. He was the confronted by the manor squad. That is something that is Japan. <laughs> that is something in Japan to make sure that seats are given to those who need them because Japan is a polite society, unlike the West. Laura Croft was tense, and after that dude got up, I swore she screamed in his face, just like in the dream I had. The train went through a tunnel that turned out to be a giant intestine. Or inte Why do I always say intestine? Intestine. And it was at this point I realized that this was a ghost train. This meant that everyone on the train had dead, or was going to die at some point. That guy who looked like me, though, did this mean I was going to die at some point? This game is just too disturbing for me, and I almost shut it off. But I knew I had to continue the game. Laura then got off the station and walked to a house, and she sat down, almost considering if she wanted to give birth here and now, but she couldn't. Then she approached another castle, and... Week 35, Part 1. Level started with Laura very slowly getting out of bed, and she seemed really to struggle with this. At last, Laura was up, but it was then I noticed that her posture had changed, and she was now leaning backwards slightly. Laura was now back in Komodo, and I walked Laura out of this room in castle to see what was next to be faced, but it was then I noticed that Laura Croft is waddling, this really disturbing and upsetting for me to see, the sensual, athletic, 
and fit Laura Croft is not waddling like an emperor penguin? It was then I realized that before all of this happened, Laura Croft was like a sports car. Slim, slick, and a goose. Nope. <laughs> it doesn't say goose. <laughs> and with <laughs> good features. But pregnancy has made her more like some big, bulky camper van complete with <laughs> residents. How could anyone want to do this to Laura? How could they want her to become like this? I moved Laura through out of that room and noted how slowly she was waddling to get out. Every room now taking twice as long to get through because Laura has to slowly waddle across them. Then she came to a corridor with eyes all over the walls that stared at her and were very scary and we flickering all the time. Some were bleeding black blood and others were glaring at Laura. I thought this could be another, but there could, <laughs> but there was a chance it could be. So I had to make Laura to get out of this room. Laura Croft was now in a room full of baby clothes and as I got her to water across, it came to life and they all had evil faces on them. They attacked. And then I realized that these must be, and I got Laura to face these, and she fought them off with ammo from the gun found in the underwater Egyptian palace. Now they were defeated, but Laura is low on ammo, and luckily she found some along with a med kit, but then there were further problems. Because of the size of Laura's belly, she struggled to pick them up, as she couldn't bend down with that huge belly in the way. So... I had to watch Laura struggle for 10 minutes to pick up these items. Week part two, you couldn't even type 35. Now Laura had these items and it was time for her to advance, but every now and then she had pains in belly that had to make her shift position. I could see that she was worried that these might be contractions, but they weren't and were probably just constipation or pain from stretching ligaments. I at last got Laura out of the zone and caught a glimpse of her bra as she was adjusting her cloth and saw she had a nursing bra. This was really too much. The though of Laura Croft having to wear a nursing bra is just heartbreaking. At this point, I moved Laura through the castle more, and there was a corridor that Laura had to walk down. And as she did, a boulder was rolled towards her, and I had to get her to run. I was worried that Laura would not run fast enough, but she keep one step ahead, and I kept pushing the D-pad as hard as I could to get Laura to safety. I just... I, oh, fuck. I did this... Wait, no. I did this, Laura got... Fuck. I did this, Laura got to a pole that the boulder landed in. Then there were screams of childbirth from a room, and a small monkey-like creature was shot out. It got up, uh, burrowed into the floor. It was at this point I realized that it was a... The... Attacked Laura, and I had to get her to shoot it. And it tried to trip Laura up, knowing how heavy and ungainly she now is. I got her to adapt to these attacks and fired at this fiend. The rah, 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 was trying to claw uh, Laura's face and I had to get her to shoot it with a magnum. And soon we got a tactic down to kill this monster. Then Laura came to a dressing room where other women gave her beauty treatment, manicures and such. And they did exfoliating and moisturizing of Laura's very large belly. It was then I realized that Laura must be almost nine months pregnant now and this dreadful hack was almost over and it was then I realized that the women who had been giving this treatment to Laura were ghosts as they now vanished into thin air then Laura realized this and week 36 part 1 it was then I realized that Laura's ankles were swollen and looked painful but Laura had to keep pushing on there were a pool of water ahead of a big pool of water and then Laura had to change from her Kamina to her swimsuit and I had to constantly look at that huge belly as I moved Laura into the pool. She waddled over to the pool's edge and as gracefully as she could, lowered herself into the pool. Laura was much easier to control in water as she feels much less heavy and ungainly in this water environment. Around the pool's edge there were these creatures that each looked like a small child but with hard scales and hooks coming out of their kneecaps that looked like tiger claws. They dropped from the edge of the pool and swam underneath the, oh, swam towards Laura to attack. It was then I realized that these were, who were going to swim towards Laura and drag her underwater to, 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 to drown her out and drain her blood and steal her soul. This was confirmed with a customary glance underneath the water that was littered with the bodies of women and men. 
I made Laura swim faster and faster and she got to the edge of the pool to pull herself up before she was pulled under the pool to die like Monsieur Paul and Villette. Laura grabbed the end of the pool and was going to pull herself up when she had been grabbed by a blah 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 and that was dragging her down but luckily there was a flaxseed by the side of the pool which Laura Croft pulled down and scared them off. Now Laura was able to slowly rise herself out of the pool. Oh, God. oh this sucks. Oh, this sucks so bad. Oh, God. Ah. Week 36, Part 2. Then there were many different eyes flying at Laura Croft, and it was a blah blah. They were sending these eyes to spy on Laura and make sure she doesn't steal anything in this room. So I had to carefully walk Laura out of the room, and when it did, the eyes returned to the blah blah. After I got Laura out of this room, she is back in her Camino again, and I saw that shadow looming over Laura again and placing its hands on her belly. It was the devil. He was holding Laura's belly because he knows the time is short and his son will be born soon. Then he left again and Laura walked through more of the castle. Laura was then passing a Japanese castle window looking onto a Japanese garden. Then in the distance, there was another lung tree. This one much bar uh, bigger. Is it going to be Japanese as well? Then the others. Its trachea was the trunk of the tree. This then formed several branches or bronchi. Bronchi, broncre, baby de boo, which divided several times like twigs to then produce the most delicate structures. The avioli, or leaves of the tree. It was within the avioli that gas exchanges were taking place. I knew that this would be the final boss of the stage, or at least a major baddie. Laura passed this window, and it was at this point I realized that she seemed to have better posture, probably because of all the exercise that Laura does make her more fit and resilient than most pregnant women, though she still waddled like penguin and had the other problems mentioned before. As Laura waddled down this dark hallway, there were sounds of crying, and it got louder and louder. And I found that the sounds were coming from a big rock. And this must be rock, like the famous fucking Yonaki Ishii. I moved uh, Laura <laughs> by it, and icy tinkle ran up my spine, hearing crying coming from the rock. Week 36, Part 3. Then Laura reached the garden with a giant lung tree, and it roared and shot gas everywhere. This was a hard fight, and Laura had to use all of her weapons to stand a chance. The pistol shot out avioli, and so did the shotgun and Uzis, but when they were destroyed, they regenerated. So I eventually found out that you had to destroy the bronchi as well. So when the avioli were destroyed, uh, I had to switch to the gun from the water Egyptian part to destroy the bronchi, but that was still not enough, as they regenerated as well. So you had to destroy the avioli with small arms, fire, and then the bronchi with the Egyptian gun, and then finally I found that the wave gun that uses the kicks and movements of Laura's baby as a weapon to destroy the trachea, finally killing the monster. If wondered what the breast milk gun did in this fight, it neutralized the gas. The tree admitted, so it didn't hurt Laura Croft. Now the tree was dead and its monstrous influence dispelled Laura moved forward and found there was a baby shower for her. In that shower were all the blah blah blah. Those souls of dead pregnant women from the uh, start of the stage. Also, th the, there were the women who were all the pregnant or giving birth badass women in the, f in the last stage. They were throwing a shower just for Laura and the evil she was soon to birth just a few more weeks left. Laura screamed. End of stage. Sh fucking sure. Are we almost done? Week 37, week 38, week 40, week 41, labor. Oh my god. No, we're not almost fucking done. Eh. Oh, I'm gonna fucking finish this drink real quick. Oh, this is gonna fuck me up. <sighs> I don't know where I'm at. Week 37. Oh fuck, I didn't finish my drink. Hold on. Oh god, that was terrible. Okay. Week 37, part 1. This was the final stage now, and it was on a mountain path. Laura was no longer in Camino, but now in her classic outfit, which now looked ridiculous on her swollen form. The tank top barley covered her belly and the shorts buckled under her form. I was wonder why Laura would think it was a good idea to go out like this in her condition. Yet, Laura seemed a little lighter, and like she could breathe easier, and I saw why her belly had dropped, and was not so close to her lungs. 
but was resting on her pelvis. This is how she could get up a mountain path. She walked along this path and found that she had to enter a cave to rest, and when there, Laura was starting to tidy this case, a fucking cave, as if she was getting ready to give birth here before realizing that she has to move on. There was a machine that gave Laura a plaster cast of her belly while she was there, which I thought was wacky. I moved Laura out of the cave through a small door, but she got stuck in it and had to slowly squeeze through, which took almost three minutes. Laura is still waddling and moving really slowly despite the belly dropping. Then Laura was in a egg. Then Laura was in a the exit to the cave on the other side and it was covered in hairs. As Laura moved down this final part of the cave, the hairs started falling and the mouths appeared in the walls and started eating them. I had to make Laura waddle fast as to not to be eaten herself. Then when Laura got out, she was so desperate to urinate and had to find somewhere to pee. This became a constant problem because of the baby pushing on the bladder. Now at this stage, Laura had to climb to several platforms and then jump to another to get her up the mountain. That is really hard to do this kind of jumping puzzle with Laura Croft nine months pregnant with her being heavier and clumsy and her whole center of gravity shifted. Not to mention that her belly is now pushing down on her pelvis. Week 37 Part 2 Despite all this, Laura managed to make each jump, but it took a lot of building up to each on, and after each jump, she had to stop and recover. Similar with pulling herself up to each ledge, and it took much longer, and she was exhausted after each time she managed one of these feats, I had to wait for her to recover before pushing her onwards. After this, Laura had to stop and have a meal, which she did, and it was a very high crab of meal, but it was a good thing. <laughs> high crab meal? Then after the meal, Laura Croft was noting some things down to herself and the baby was turning inside her belly towards the sound of her voice. Then a loud noise happened and there was a giant walking past Laura and she had to hide the loud noises were making the baby jump in Laura's belly. So she had to hide, so what? So she had to hold her belly while not making a sound, just wincing at the baby kicking her about. Then I got a good look at the giant's face, and good gods was in horrifying. It had a sorrowful face that was crying huge tears of blood, and its face looked like rotting, but also evil. Where its eyes should be, there was only two black holes, and it moaned as it walkings. Then when out of sight, Laura was able to get to the next area, but this required a big jump, and the giant could come back at any moment, so... A timer started for the giant's return and I had to get Laura to move fast. She jumps and just about made it to clinging onto the cliff by the hands. Do you guys, do you, does anyone ever remember the game Adventure Quest Worlds? I fucking missed that game. Not the 3D version, I, I saw that on Steam. Fucking, I missed the like old shit. God, I missed the old fucking Adventure Quest. When I very first got into it, I was fucking, I would farm the red dragon if anyone knows what the fuck I'm talking about. But back then, the Red Dragon was like the boss. I don't mean it was just like a minor little fucking mini boss. I mean, it was the boss to farm. I think it was even before, uh, I think it was before or after, Jesus, first uh, Chaos Lord. I don't know where this came from. I missed that game. I missed a lot of things. Such is life, I guess, my friends. Where am I? Uh, uh, then when out of sight, Laura was able to get to the next area, but this required a big jump and the giant could come back at any moment. So a timer started for the giant's return and I had to get Laura to move fast. So she jumps and just about made it to clinging onto the cliff by the hands. I already read that. The timer now getting lower and lower as she pulls herself up and I managed to get Laura to waddle run to the big door in the side of the mountain just as the timer was in its last five seconds. Laura got in the door and was safety from the giant. And then, week 38, part 1. Now Laura had to stop and rest. She laid on an Aztec stone pillar and slept for a good while, until she was woken by the baby kicking because it's running out of room in Laura's womb. Laura raised herself and got moving again. She needed to get somewhere fast to birth the baby, and she only has 20 days now to get there. A cross-section showed that baby was facing head down in Laura's womb. She moved this through this area and it was clear we are in an Aztec lands now. Then Laura is attacked by, who fucking cares, who tried to eat her flesh and bones, but 
I got Laura to fight them off with her guns, and she prevailed for now. She, well, oh, we moved Laura down the hallways more, and there was now bones all over everywhere, and all along the walls and the ceiling. There was more bones here than in the Paris catacombs, and it was holding up the ceiling and strengthening the structure of the complex. You mean like the fucking catacombs? There was some good here, and that is that Laura found some herbal flowers that eased the pain caused by her expanded body, as well as her calm her and center her energy. Then I had to get Laura to run because she was swarmed by, fucking who cares, who wanted to steal her baby, and there were women with skeletal faces and with eagle claws for hands. They chased Laura and I got her to safety at, the, at her next destination. There Laura faced a new danger and that were, that was, were giant fists emerging from the walls to try and grab her and crush her like a bug. She had to waddle past them, and they were fast, but she had strategy to get her through. You mean you did? I thought you... Weren't you playing the game? Or are you just watching it all now? Who cares? Week 38, part 2. Then Laura reached the other side and was saw a big pool of water, and I should have known that whatever earlier meant earlier that there was water nearby. This was clearly some huge Aztec temple and complex. Then out of water came a fucking the part crocodile, part fish, and part toad of Aztec legend, and it attacked Laura Croft who fought it off. It was a tough battle, but Laura managed to hurt it with grenades and guns. Yeah, that'll fucking do it. Then with her other weapons, it almost ate her in several different ways, and this was a hard fight. I got Laura won in the end though, but it required some of my best Tomb Raider skills. Then that part ended, and it was the next level, week 39 part 1. Laura was now in a big Aztec complex, and she had to walk down long corridors and fight various beasts. This also made Laura very tired, so she had to sit down and rest now quite often. Her center of gravity is also way off, so jumping puzzles became even harder, and fighting and even walking seemed to risk Laura falling over. Then we reached a giant hallway, its walls covered in eyes, and they were staring at Laura Croft in an evil way. I got Laura to ignore all of this and press onwards, but it was hard. Laura had to catnap now and again to regain energy. She was sleeping at this one point in an ancient Aztec bedroom when an Aztec death owl came in a hooted a hideous hoot. <laughs> this must be one of the death owls that were with the Aztec gods of death. A for death to, um, what? A for tell death, I thinking. But whose death could it be? Laura's? Oh, God, she might die in childbirth, or could it be her baby's death? Or maybe it's the death of all of mankind, and this game is predicting Armageddon. Either way, I could not let it go ahead, so I shook my controller to wake Laura, and I got her to wallow over to the owl, and she caught it just in time. Then she, Jesus, then she pulled out its heart and ate it. This is the true Aztec way of dealing with such things, and it is good that Laura now knows it well because she needs it to survive. In the next part, Laura was getting more movements in her belly and had to watch as her belly distorted and move about like a violent storm beneath her skin. And this now was happening at least 10 times a level. This area also had 400 rabbits hopping around. And some of them were drunk on tequila. Hey, hey, hey let's go. I managed to get Laura to avoid upsetting them and she reached another area and there an Aztec computer scan. An Aztec computer? Scanned Laura's belly and gave a picture of the baby, and it was truly evil looking. My god, this is what Laura is about to give birth to in a week. It is the very spawn of the devil himself, clearly. Week 39, part 2. Then Laura came to this room, and there are these spite, sprite, sp there are these, yes, yeah, sprite like spirits. Which are clearly blah 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 and they scare Laura real good and they scared her so much that her spirit flew out of her body. Then a timer started because I only had a limited time of amount of time to get Laura's soul back in her body before it is lost for good. Are you kidding me? I also had to get her soul to avoid soul traps and creatures that would eat her soul. Soon I got it back and Laura Croft was alive again and this was good. She then frightened her off them off with her guns. Now Laura Croft was comforted. Okay, I'm gonna try and pronounce this. Now Laura Croft was comforted by Zochikitzel, the Aztec goddess of childbirth. 
I'm gonna call her stupid who told her that it is not much longer now so then war Laura walked to the next area and then week 40 part one so now Laura was in a huge chamber and I had to move up to the end of it there was also tribes of blah 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 the frog warriors in this area and Laura Croft had to face them off with her weapons and arms there was many of these frog warriors. I'm like kicking my leg back and forth on the chair and I'm just now realizing it's making a sound. I hope that's okay. <laughs> I doubt anyone got this far in the story. And Laura Croft had to face them off with her weapons and arms. There was many of these frog warriors in different parts of the maze, like structure. And Laura kept running into them and having to fight them while performing puzzles or lining up jumps. Then the door opened up the next area, and Laura Croft waddled through it. it, it this R was covered in skeletons. <laughs> then the door opened to the next area, and Laura Croft waddled through it. This R cover was what? Damn, even reading it slow. Waddled through it. This R was covered in skeletons and bones. The amongst those bones. Zitsumoto appeared, and it was at that moment I realized that these Zitsumoto creatures, the creatures that protect pregnant women but also are dangerous in times of instability. Which one was with these fellows I wondered to myself aloud? They were coming after Laura, but to hurt her or help her, I didn't want to find out and move her as fast as she would go out of this area. When Laura was safe again, she suddenly stopped and screamed in agony and cried in pain, and then Thought that Laura had gone into labor at last, but she moved around a bit. The contraction stopped. It was then I realized that this was Braxton Hicks, or practice labor, and Laura still had longer to go. I was wondering why Laura hadn't gone into labor yet. Then I remembered hearing that very athletic women like go into labor later. I knew this because I had been reading up on this stuff because of this hack, so I could make sure that Laura gets through her pregnancy smoothly. Week 40 Part 2 then Laura had to move onwards as she's being chased by serpents being coming out of the sky. It was then I realized that these were the Sensen mimics of... They were probably here to kill Laura, so I got her to waddle away at top speed. She reached a place of safety as she was guided by... Stupid, that's right, I said stupid. She was guided by stupid to reach the next area, but this wasn't much better, and there were stomach swamps again that were consuming animals. These were the most difficult to avoid than they ever had been before. Then a giant stomach swamp emerged. It was the king of all stomach swamps, and I had to get Laura to avoid the acid it shot at her. And also, I sh shat, shot, it shot at her. Uh, I already forgot where I was. Do, 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 and it was a giant, and also the jaws of the stomach that were trying to grab and eat her. This was a hard battle, just as hard as the mother lung tree and took all of Laura's weapons to take it down. Then a giant creature emerged from the stomach swamp, and it was a giant fucking who gives a shit with a huge mouth and hide, hide, and huge tongues and huge range of teeth. This was hardest battle yet, and it took all the weapons damage and laughed them off. But Laura kept fighting, kept fighting. After almost dying several times and almost running out of ammo, I found where I need to hit thing, and Laura got a full ammo recharge and she hit it with all weapons, including the pregnancy-related weapons, like the sauna kicks and the breast milk gun. This destroyed it, and then the last level was over. Right? Wrong. Week 41. Weeks. How could it be this is just not possible? Why make Laura suffer more of this pregnancy? Just let give birth, just end her suffering already. She already has a pain of labor to go through, but now after another week on top of that... This like the torches of Hades, or hashtag that dude that had to push the blouter up only for it to come down again. Now Laura had to waddle herself through the Aztec town and fight all kinds of creatures. It was good that it gave you puberty of ammo. Um, that says plenty. Why did I say? It was good that it gave you plenty of ammo, and the wave gun had been emerged, I mean upgraded. Fuck, dude. I'm just inventing words. Uh, to fire Braxton Hicks. <laughs> but there was so much palaces Laura had to go through in this city and she kept having false contractions now and again so she kept having to stop and scream in pain while exploring this pace. There is not much to say about this level apart from it being very long, like a really long tomb raider level. 
and it was also raining blood throughout most of it, and the sky was blood, there was dark black, and blood red lightning that lit out the night. The level ended at the Pit of Giant and Mean Giant Aztec Pyramid that is probably higher than Mount Everest. Week 42, this level was Hell on Earth, and not doomed to Hell on Earth, because that would be cool, but actual torture. There was so big level and Laura Croft had to waddle, slowly waddle up those steps, fighting baddies on the way up there, and there was enemies from all previous levels that she had to fight and more Aztec monsters along with more monstrous monsters. Then she reached the top at least after doing a boss rush of previous bosses as well. Then she reached the top and this bloody jelly fell out from between her legs and landed on the floor. The blood raining from the sky got more intense and lighting was shredding fucking everything. <laughs> Laura <laughs> was getting more pains and agony and contraction in he huge belly and for every contraction another lighting struck and a another tortured soul screamed for damnation. There was demonic chanting and Aztec rituals of bloody sacrifice on high. Then all the women that were in the hospital, all these badass women that were either heavily pregnant or giving birth in the hospital stage, were there were were there now. Were there now. Mother is waiting for the birth of the one of the all of all evil fuck. <laughs> Let me try that again. Holy shit. Waiting for the birth of the one of all evil, the one who claimed the soul of the motherfucking earth. Then Laura's contraction became 15 minutes apart and then 10. The lighting was still striking and with every contraction and every time a demon screamed or monster rode or a ground cracked open. Then Laura unleashed an ocean of life from her vagina, causing labor to start. The figure of the high Aztec priestess stood over her, and it was none other than, than, than Jacqueline Natla. And she must have been behind all this conspiracy and pregnancy of famous video game badass women to birth the ultimate evil. Then, labor part one, part one. Laura was having regular painful contraction, and she screaming and pushing, and then Jacqueline was watching in glee and kept checking to see if the birth of the evil one. At this stage, Laura is in early phase and she was having short, short contractions. Then Jacqueline made a spell on Laura so that her soul emerges from her body to do battle with the great spirit while her body goes through labor without her. It was good to control normal slim Laura Croft again, even though this is just her spirit. And then the sky went blood red and thunder and lighting got more intense. And Gygus theme started and a giant evil uh, appeared. It was like a demon monster baby, but with evil eyes. Because this is Lara's spirit, she can't use pregnancy based weapons. And so has to rely on her normal weapons. This was the final battle and hardest fight in the game. Laura was shooting at the monster and it was trying to down her in blood or strike her with lighting and destroy her with blood lasers. This required all of my Tomb Raider skills and I had to shoot it with all the weapons Laura had. Whenever time I landed a hit, Laura's mortal seemed to progress through more labor more. Then it hit Laura and it took of health and I actually felt pain in real life at this damage done to Laura. The game hurt me every time Laura got hurt by the boss. So that means that if Laura dies in this fight, I will die in real life. I didn't want to die, so tried shutting the computer off or the game off, but it wouldn't turn off no matter how hard I tried. So I was determined to beat the beast so that Laura could have her baby and I could not die with this game causing my death. Though it would be strange how people would react to something, someone being killed by a video game. I fought with all my might and all my Tomb Raider skills. It was the most epic bass boss boss battle I had ever fought in my life as a gamer, and it was so hard and intense that I really did think I was going to die. Labor Part 1 Part 2 The contractions of Laura's physical body were now 5 minutes apart. When, man when, when major damage happened to the beast, Laura Croft's physical body dilated more, and so I kept damaging it with Laura's weapons doing more and more damage. Then Haether and Stupid provided Laura with spiritual weapons to do damage to this great monster, and I got Laura to shot it with them doing fantastic amounts of damage. The Laura on the birth altar was dilating more and more, and Jacqueline was ecstatic and looking through Laura's legs to see how far she had regressed. The monster was defeated and Laura's physical body was now fully dilated, but then the monster emerged again. 
now in its second form, the transition form. In this form, Laura had to f had to fucking hold off the <laughs> hit the monster and instead hide from attacks that it was doing to her. If Laura damaged it in this form, it would cause fucking Laura physical bot. It would it would cause Laura physical birthing body to push, and that would be too early, and it might hurt Laura's cervix. So I had to wait and avoid attacks. And now, when Laura's spirit form got hurt. It would not only damage Laura and cause me pain in real life, but also cause Laura's physical body to vomit or shake violently. Throughout this labor, you could see Jacqueline moderating, m fucking monitoring the labor with a Doppler sonic aid and looking at labor charts. Then that stage was over and spirit Laura could fight the beast again on her own terms. Now it was clear that Laura Croft's physical body was getting a huge sensation of fullness in her vagina and a massive urge to push. The beast had taken a new form. It looked like a cross between the rake and red from that Godzilla pasta and a baby. When Spirit Lara shot at it, the physical Laura pushed, but I had to time this with her contractions that were coming slightly less often now, or else it would do damage to Laura and me. Labor Part 1, Part 3 this made one really thrill boss battle because it would do all kinds of insane attacks on Laura and she couldn't fight back until the physical Laura was having contractions and she could do damage. It was so hard not having to attack until then what it was hurting me in real life when it hurt Laura and I and all. The physical Laura Croft kept switching positions with each major damage done to the boss. She went from laying down on all fours to squatting etc. Then Jacqueline was giving this Laura encouragement and helping her bear down. The various video game women badasses were also cheering Laura on. Then, as the beast got to its last hit points, I could see that physical Laura's minge is getting stretched to breaking point. Then, physical Laura was told to stop by Jacqueline, and the beast tried to attack spiritual Laura. But fuck, why did I say that? Uh, fucking attack spiritual Laura with everything in it had an a <laughs> desperate attempt to kill her and she took the full blow of tax uh, and the health bar was near Zell. I'm just fucking saying made up words. She took the full blow of attacks and the health bar was near zero and I was so pained that I thought I had died as well. But Hather and Stupid restored Laura to full health so this was part of the game that was meant to be unavoidable. Then physical Laura was told to bear down again and spiritual Laura fired at the monster and did massive damage. Now physical Laura was crowning and the head became more and more visible with every damage done to the monster. When the monster was almost dead, the baby's head became fully visible, and Jacqueline was able to pull the baby out fully just as spiritual Laura dealt the final blow to the monster. Except, the monster came back in a third final crippled form that was not a threatening, but still dangerous. The battle was much like before, and this time, physical Laura was birthing the placenta to complete the birth. I got spiritual's Laura to once again avoid the monster's attacks, and attacked when physical Laura was contracting. This went smoothly, and the monster went down. For good. Conclusion Part 1 Now, Laura had fully given birth, the cord was cut, and she took the placenta and ate it like a wild wolf. The baby was given to her and she breastfed it and the baby drank greedily and as this took place, Laura looked at the screen with the most horrifying face. The most demonic, evil face and she was laughing and laughing with the most deranged laugh you could, with the most evil deranged laugh you can think a woman could emit. The other badass women were chanting and saying evil words. The babies they were holding now had hyper-realistic blood red eyes. We got it again, boys. Uh blood red eyes that stared into the soul. It was clear that these badass women were impregnated by demons and made to go through all of the horrible and strange and humiliating aspects of pregnancy to birth these evil babies, just like Laura. But Laura was to be was to make be pregnant with their master and leader and would lead this evil demonic race to conquer mankind. Their first evil deed was to cause all these things to happen to all these badass women. 
yeah, badass women and ruin their bodies. And that was before they were even born. Now they were born, but they would do much worse and begin the final battle between good and evil. The game predicts Armageddon, and I'm sure of it. Then the camera spans all these formerly badass women with their babies, and all of them are crying blood, and the babies have blood red eyes. Then the camera turns back to Laura Croft, who is breastfeeding this evil baby and future demon lord. She then says, Thank you for helping bringing this infernal majesty into this world. Leonard. <laughs> and, and was taken back. That's my name, I thought. And then the baby took its head away from Laura's breasts and started laughing with monstrous evil cackling that got louder and louder until it was deafening. And so did Laura laughing that evil laugh that was getting to definite, de, de, getting to defaming pitch. Then the computer screen went black and I couldn't get it to turn on again. Conclusion Part 2 I was recovering from this ordeal when I saw something move from behind me, and I looked back. What I saw then made me scream at the top of my lungs. It was an action figure of Laura Croft, heavily pregnant with blood running from her eyes. This is why I'll never play another Tomb Raider game again. I couldn't get the, <laughs> I couldn't get the computer to turn back on or get disc out, even though I am an expert when it comes to computers. So I eventually took it to PC World and they got the disc out for me and restored my computer. When I got the game in my hands, I tried to destroy it and snap it, but it would always uh, reappear. So eventually, I sold it. I never knew what happened to it after that. Sot, that's my story. And I know you won't believe me, but that's your privilege. But just watch out for the coming of the evil ones. When there will be a mass pregnancy amongst badass women like Laura Croft. Then we know when Judgment Day is near. I regret selling this game, because I should have really sent it to Vatican, who would know how to deal with things like this. I hope that if you, my fellow reader, come across this game, that you send it straight to the Vatican, or the Dalai Lama, or any other holy man. The world needs to be prepared for the coming of this evil. And that's the fucking end. Oh my god.